Auburn Football Review with Coach Pat Dye has been a game that could mean the Southeastern Conference Championship for Georgia. Perfect day for football. The temperature 55, light wind, low humidity. The chance of rain, of course, is none. What a day for football. Beautiful and historic Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Hi, everybody. I'm Rick Davis along with Paul Ellen for today's game. Paul, we've talked about it a long, long time. The 86th renewal, we could go on about it forever and ever and ever because you got Georgia's Pat Dye now at Auburn. Auburn's Vince Dooley now at Georgia. But one key area for this game is turnovers. Turnovers are a very key area, Rick. Georgia leading the nation or second in the nation behind Penn State in takeaways with 38. Auburn, on the other hand, tied with Wisconsin for first in the nation in the number of turnovers they give up. Only 11 turnovers for the Auburn Tigers this year. Georgia's a plus 16 in turnover margin. Auburn a plus 15. Whoever wins that battle has a good chance to win this football game. Those numbers do mean a lot in terms of what will happen in the game, but one thing that means a lot, we got another set of numbers, and that's a pair of 34s, and you don't need to say much more about them. Well, the comparisons are obvious. Herschel Walker, uh, the greatest football player probably to ever play college football. There you see the statistics on Herschel Walker, and he is rolling to another great year despite the start he had early. We know about his rushing ability, of course, but you don't see much of Herschel out of the backfield. Only four receptions on the year, but this is what happened happens when he can get loose out of the backfield. He is a very, very dangerous runner. Of course, he's dangerous anytime he touches the football. Today, he can move into fourth place on the all-time rushing list in college football. Already he ranks fifth, and he still has 13 or 14 games remaining in his college career. There's another 34, of course. We'll talk about him in a moment, but what about Randy? First, Randy Campbell. We talked about the turnovers. Randy Campbell's the key to that. He's only thrown one interception this year. He's the trigger man in the Auburn offense. The Auburn running backs, Lionel James and Bo Jackson, the little train, and of course Bo Jackson may make the Auburn offense go. That's the big change from last year, the caliber of Auburn's running back force. And of course, Ryan O'Neill teaming with him in the backfield. There's Bo Jackson from a week ago, probably the key game, uh, the key play in the game against Rutgers a week ago. This individual effort, as Bo just got a crease on the left side, woke the Auburn fans up, moreover, woke the Auburn offensive lineup and really helped to turn the game around. We don't need to tell you about the crowd. The place is full. It is very loud and very noisy. We're looking forward to a great one, and we'll be back with a kickoff right after this. Auburn, Georgia. We're back at Jordan-Hare Stadium for the kickoff of today's game. Georgia has won the toss. The number one ranked Bulldogs will receive and defend the south end zone of the stadium. Auburn will, of course, kick and defend the north end zone. Paul? Auburn showing very little emotion at the start of the game. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? Well, I think it is. I think they're, they're ready to play, and they know what the game means, and now they just have to get the job done. Deep for Georgia will be Keith Montgomery, their leading kickoff returner. The kick will go to the left-hand corner of the end zone, taking it to six-yard line, all the way out to the 20. Great hit there. Again, Jimmy Bone. We mentioned last week Jimmy Bone, along with Chuck Clanton, the two headhunters on the kickoff team. And Bone broke the wedge and made the tackle. A great hit by Bone. The Georgia offense, last singer, McCarthy and Walker in the backfield. Uh, everybody knows about Herschel Walker. Receivers, Wisham, Jones, Norris, Brown. Look for Herman Archie to get in there and catch the passes today also. Across the front, Harper, Weaver, Radloff, Brown, and McIntyre. James Brown, of course, out of Montgomery. John Lastinger out of Valdosta, Georgia, a city that has produced several good quarterbacks. The give is to the first man through the backfield. That will be Chris McCarthy. McCarthy got a few hard-earned yards and will get it up to about the 24, 25-yard line. He is brought down at that point by Chris Martin and Dal Altman. Quickly setting the Auburn defense, Riley and Blackard on the front. Greg Carr, Chris Martin, the linebackers. And, of course, King, Drinker, Harris, and Collier in the defensive secondary. Ben Thomas at right tackle. They sent Herschel to the right side that time, came back with a fullback against the grain. They've done more of that the last couple of weeks. In motion is Chuck Jones, the flanker. The give again to McCarthy. McCarthy will have, looks like a first down, maybe just about a oh, half yard short, depending on the spot. It will be short of a first down by about a half yard. McCarthy on the carry and is brought down by Vernon Blackard. You know, Rick, uh, actually the two Georgia fullbacks have a better average per carry than Herschel Walker this year. And the last couple of weeks, they've been able to take advantage of very active linebackers. Florida last week, Auburn, of course, a similar situation. The linebackers moving with Herschel Walker, and they've been able to cut the fullback back against the grain. Last singer, 700. 
165 yards passing. We won't see it this time. Instead, we'll see Herschel. He's hit at the line. I don't know if he got it or not. It's going to be close. Herschel with the dive, and he was nailed right at the line of scrimmage. A great hit there by Chris Martin out of Huntsville. There's a Georgia. several other Tigers. The Georgia short yardage play, Herschel, trying to go over the top. Met on the far side. Appeared to be Chris Martin applying the initial hit. And it appeared, though, that he did get the first down yardage, and we'll see. There you see Herschel Walker and the statistics he's piled up this year despite the first two games playing with a broken hand and uh, being unable to be as effective as he normally is. Note the pads all the way down uh, his backside protecting the kidneys. He really takes some shots every week, and they've devised some special pads to protect him. You'll note in the close-up. It is a Georgia first down. Herschel gets just less than a yard, but enough for the Georgia first down on a third down conversion. So much is said about Herschel Walker, but the Georgia Bulldogs have several other outstanding running backs. We'll see a lot of them today. First down dogs at their own 31. Last finger will keep and won't get very much. He'll be brought down on that side by Greg Carr. Carr over quickly from his linebacker spot to make the stop. They tried to run the option that time. Georgia does not run the option quite as much as Auburn does. Of course, Auburn's initiative on the option there uh, to make them make Lassinger keep the ball. There you see the Auburn defensive statistics. Uh, the Tigers very tough against the running game. They made Lassinger keep the ball, cut off the pitch to Herschel Walker. As a result, a very short gain, only one yard. Georgia leads the conference in rushing the football. They face a second down nine. Lassinger to Walker. Walker is stacked up. Swarming Auburn defense pulls him down at the 30. They'll call it the 36. He got across the 35 and up to the 36. It's a gain of about three or four for Herschel Walker. Now Offman applying the initial hit, but Auburn really going to have a crowd around Herschel Walker every time he gets the, uh, the football. And Greg Carr also with the Auburn linebacker, Chris Martin, coming in. Uh, Herschel with a gain of about four. Didn't really look like he got that much, but it'll be another conversion situation. Third and five this time for the dog. Possibly a passing down the first attempt of the day for last finger. He is a junior out of Valdosta. He will throw. Over to the far side to Simmons. Simmons has it. Has he got the first? I think so. Good, good pursuit by the Auburn defense. Greg Tut, Greg Carr, and Bob Harris all up to make the stop. Good piece of running by Melvin Simmons. Check the replay. Lastinger got him the ball in good shape. Normally, you like to see the receiver wait for some interference to get out there, but this time he knew the yard he had to have up across the 41, and he just tried to dive through the Auburn tacklers and was able to pick up the second Georgia first down. So first down on the conversion situation as Melvin Simmons receives the first pass from John Lastinger. This drive started for Georgia at their own 21-yard line. They now have it first down and 10 at their own 42. Lastinger is still the quarterback. He will probably go all the way. McCarthy in the backfield will send him in motion to the right side. The pitch to Walker. Walker has a block. Walker across the 45. He's still free on his feet. Martin has him and runs him out of bounds. Boy, the guy is, un is absolutely incredible. I, you really, we're going to spend all day trying to describe him, but I think we better just quit doing that and just talk about what he's doing. Well, what you see on the screen, Herschel Walker, they're a very right-handed football team. They ran to the right side 65% of the time against Florida. They sent McCarthy in motion, got him in front. Auburn actually got in, in a position to tackle Walker in pretty good shape, but he's such a great athlete, he was able to power the ball for seven-plus yards. Herschel Walker, already the owner of 10 NCAA records, some more to fall later this year and in his senior season. 13 yards on the day for Herschel. McCarthy gets the carry this time across midfield down to about the Auburn 48-yard line. Martin again quickly up on the stop along with a host of other Tigers. Doug Smith enters the Auburn lineup. He will come in at one defensive tackle. Georgia will face a second down and about, uh, no, it's a first down. They got enough that time. We thought it was going to be short, but it is enough for a first down. Now the ball spotted just outside the Auburn 47. Auburn can't afford to let Georgia continue to power away. Of course, uh, the fatigue factor would be a big factor for Auburn, especially in the second half, because that's what Georgia's been able to do to their opponents, just pound away at them until the fourth quarter this year, and Auburn doesn't want to let them do that. Obviously a ball control team. This pass is to Simmons. Same pass we saw a moment ago. Great move by Simmons, still on his feet down to the 31-yard line. Great move on the reception by Melvin Simmons. He is a junior wide receiver out of Williston, Florida. Finally, Quincy Williams ran him down, but watching the replay, Paul, he makes a great move here. It's the same pass we saw earlier. This time, single coverage. Greg Tutt unable to contain Simmons. Quincy Williams out in the pursuit. Eventually, will run him down, but a fine move by Simmons. When you defend against the run, we're seeing uh, Auburn's defense in the same position. Rutgers defense was in against Auburn last week. You've got a single cover because of Herschel Walker. First down, Georgia. Jones is the wide out to the far side. McCarthy and Walker in the backfield. Herschel will have it. Somebody lost the helmet. Walker got a couple of yards down to the 27-yard line. 
call it a gain of four for Herschel Walker. Ten minutes, 53 seconds to go in the first period. Auburn still with the football. Ugga, four. That's an ugly dog. It really is. <laughs> Amazing what Herschel Walker does. And the Georgia offensive line, got to give them a lot of credit. They're coached by former Auburn man Alex Gibb. It appeared, as you said, he only got a couple of yards, but the third carried four yards right across the middle. Wide to the right side is Chuck Jones. He's a senior out of Aldosta. Last singer pitches to Walker. Big, big hole for Herschel Walker. He is down inside the Auburn 20 down to looks like about the 19-yard line. Great block on that one by Warren Gray as a big one. 6'3", 240, a junior out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Left a big hole for Herschel. Herschel Walker already with 25 yards now on five carries. Eight yards that time. Again, Auburn appeared to be in pretty good shape to make the play, but the individual effort as Walker started to his left, cut it back against the grain, and made a count for first down yardage now quickly inside the Auburn 20-yard line. Ten minutes, ten seconds to go in the first quarter. We have no score, but Georgia is threatening. McCarthy starts to the right side, comes back this way. He'll block for Walker. Walker has got the block, stays on his feet, and is out of bounds to the 17, giving two on the play. It'll be second down and eight now for Georgia. Nice play by Tim Drinker. They sent the fullback in motion, got him behind the quarterback, and then turned him around. They came back to the left, uh, and uh, Walker tried to get outside, appeared though he was going to get the corner. Tim Drinker came up quickly. There you see him forcing the play, and was just able to make the form play and force Walker out of bounds after only a gain of a couple of yards down short of the 17-yard line. Good block on that play by Chris McCarthy, the fullback, took out Jeff Jackson, and that enabled Herschel to get to the corner. Second down and eight. Last singer gives to Walker. Walker to the 15, to the 14, to the 13. Jeff Jackson got him. Is that a flag or is it inadvertent? It is a, it is flag, a flag, and I believe we're going to have a face mask penalty. The man who made the initial hit slid off to the top, and uh, it appeared grabbed Herschel by the helmet as he fell down and took the lick from Martin from behind. We'll check uh, if we get a replay and see, but I, I believe it's going to be a five-yard face mask penalty, and that should be enough to give Georgia the first down. Jackson and Martin on the stop for Auburn. It is a face mask, and it will be a first down. So uh, the inadvertent, non-flagrant face mask penalty, and here we'll see it. Jeff Jackson moving out, not in real good shape, didn't have the angle. Jackson, as Walker just sort of pushed him away, Jackson got the non-flagrant face mask penalty, an inadvertent face mask, but it is a five-yard penalty, and that gives Georgia first and goal as the Bulldogs have rolled down the field. Six first downs already. Dogs in business at the, at the Auburn eight-yard line. Kevin Harris wide to the right side. Give us to the inside. That's big Chris McCarthy. He's 5'11", 210, a senior out of Savannah, Georgia. McCarthy down to they'll spot the six-yard line. We'll call it a gain of about two. They just tried to force it down off the right side that time, giving it to the fullback, and now we're going to see some reinforcements. Auburn will go to the goal line defense, it appears here. And let's see, Vernon Blacker, one of the men checking in, along with James Wallace. Uh, Doug Smith comes out along with Dennis Collier. There you see Coach Vince Dooley. Auburn alumnus played for Coach Chuck Jordan here at Auburn. A special day for the Jordan family, incidentally. We'll talk more about that a little bit later as Coach Jordan will be inducted into the National Football Hall of Fame. McCarthy in motion to the right side. Walker gets the pitch to that side. Williams is out there. Walker is hit at the four, down to the four, five, and down to the four-yard line. David King up quickly along with Quincy Williams. Quincy Williams did a good job staying on his feet that play. Quincy forced Herschel wide. David King fought off the block and was able to come up and make a real good play. Got Herschel Walker right at the knees, which well, he, with, with the size and strength and balance between Herschel Walker and David King, the only play he could make, and a fine play by David King. The out-of-bounds play stops the clock with 8.48 remaining in the first quarter. Georgia started this drive at their 21-yard line. They now have it third and goal just inside the Auburn four. Barry Young enters the Georgia lineup along with McCarthy and Walker. McCarthy in motion. Walker has it. He is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward maybe to the three-yard line. Great defense by the Auburn defensive front four. They lined up in the power eye with two tight ends. They sent the man in motion to the left side, trying to get Auburn drawn toward the sideline and bring Herschel back against the grain to the right side. Auburn didn't bite when the man went in motion. Everybody stayed home, and Herschel Walker had nowhere to go. It'll be fourth and goal from the three. It appears that Kevin Butler is going to come on to try to give Georgia the lead with what would be a 19-yard attempt. Val Ottman, Steve Wallace in on the stop. Butler is 14 of 18 on field goals. Has a 59-yarder. He'll not have to worry about that length on this one. The kick is up, and it is good. Georgia has taken a 3 to nothing lead over the Auburn Tigers with eight minutes and five seconds remaining here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. 
We'll be back with more of the Auburn Tigers and Georgia Bulldogs right after this. The Georgia scoring drive, Paul, the information on that, 77 yards on an awesome 17 plays. The big factor, they held the ball for 6 minutes and 55 seconds, taking a 3-0 lead. Big morale factor for Auburn, stopping them inside the 5. Kevin Butler booms it deep. It will be taken by, it will be go out of bounds. Lionel James moved over to recover it, but it went out of bounds at the Auburn 7, and I believe Butler will have to kick this one over. Indeed, he'll have to kick it over. We mentioned just in the pregame, the wind gusting mainly from the north. At the back of the Auburn Tigers in the first quarter, up to 25 miles per hour. The flag at this time standing straight out in the face of the Georgia Bulldogs. The sun seal, though, is against uh, Auburn, and Lionel James may have some trouble with it here in the first quarter. This uh, late autumn sun, he is looking squarely into the sun as he tries to feel a kick. You mentioned the time of possession on Georgia's first drive. Nearly seven minutes. How important is that going to be, not only in the entire football game, but here in the early going? The Auburn offense now, early, has to come out and control the ball for some time. The 3 nothing is not really as important at this stage of the game as uh, Georgia holding the football. Georgia will kick after the kick that went out of bounds. They'll try it again this time from the 35-yard line. Eight minutes, five seconds left to go in the first quarter. Georgia's taken a 3 to nothing lead over the Tigers, and Kevin Butler will move through it and get it underway again. So Auburn's still looking for possession here. Lionel James again will be the deep man. That's a change from the early part of the season when Bo Jackson was the deep man on most of the kickoffs. The last couple of games, Lionel James has been returning all punts and kickoffs for Auburn. And now, with the stiff wind against Butler, Lionel's going to move up to about the five-yard line. Willie Howell and Ed Graham also deep for the Tigers. This is a long kick back to the two yards, two yards deep in the end zone. James will bring it out. He is to the 20, steps out of bounds at the 21. Might have had a little running room, but he couldn't keep his feet. Went out of bounds at the 21-yard line. A little indecision. Of course, Lionel was thinking the kick was low against the wind. A good kick deep into the end zone, but the Georgia defenders had an extra five yards to cover in covering the kick. As a result, Lionel elected to bring it out, gained about a yard. The Auburn backfield, the regular backfield, Campbell, James, Jackson, and O'Neill. Across the front, we'll see Auburn with a very few changes. Edwards and West, the receivers in the Auburn wishbone. Jay Jacobs, David Jordan, Bishop Reeves, Tracy Turner, and Pat Arrington, the listed starters. We have a flag on the kickoff once again. Georgia kicking from the 35. They were offside, Rick, so Auburn is going to make Kevin Butler kick off against the wind once again. And we didn't even see the flag back up to the south end of the field. They'll have to kick from the 30 against the wind now. So Auburn again with a chance to get some field position with a strong wind at their back if they can get a return here. Butler, of course, one of the top place kickers in the country, not only the Southeastern Conference, but the nation as well, has a very good leg, good strong leg. He's just a sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. But this time, he'll have to do it from 10 yards back from the normal position, and we'll see what that means. Auburn will send the same three deep backs, James, Howell, and Graham, but this time, Lionel James standing at his 10-yard line. You know, two years ago, when Rex Robinson graduated, everyone thought Georgia would really have a tough time replacing Rex Robinson, who for four years had been the top kicker in the SEC. Kevin Butler came in his freshman year last year and really surpassed most of Robinson's records in uh, single-year records in that first year. So after two offside penalties, Georgia will kick from the 30-yard line. They've tried it twice from the 40 and the 35, been offside both times. And here we go again, Kevin Butler to kick the deep back, James, Howell, and Ed Graham. The little train from Albany, Georgia. This game means a lot to him, you can be sure. This time a low squib kick. James will field it at uh, the 10, the 11. Now finally picks it up. Gets one block. Gets up to the 25-yard line. The actual the wedge did not quite form as it should have, Paul. Well, they elected to go the squib kick and not kick it high in the air against the wind. There will set the Auburn backfield once again. As we said it for you a moment ago, the regular starters for Auburn, receivers Edwards and West. And across the front, Auburn will use basically two units. The first unit, Jacob, Jordan, Reeves, Turner, and Arrington. So Auburn, after all the, the two penalties and making them kick from the 30-yard line, uh, gains five yards. They'll start at the 25-yard line. First down, Tigers. Their first possession of the game, 7.51 to go in the first quarter. Randy Campbell, the junior out of Hartsville, the quarterback. Gives to James. James across the 25, up to the 28-yard line. Gain of about three yards. Wayne, Ronnie Harris, a senior from San Diego, up to make the stop. The Georgia defense, Dale Carver, Freddie Gilbert, and the others across the front. The linebackers very active in the wide tackle six. And the defensive secondary leading the nation in interception. The Georgia defense has come on to be one of the more outstanding defensive units in the conference at this time. 
Second down for the Tigers. Seven yards to go. The ball at their own 28-yard line. Campbell will roll to his left as pressure and is brought down by the jersey back at the 25-yard line. Freddie Gilbert, he is the big one. 6'4", 230, a junior from Griffin, Georgia, in there to make the stop on Randy Campbell. Freddie Gilbert, a high school teammate of uh, Jeff Jackson, the Auburn defensive end, and very close uh, personal friends, in fact. Uh, you see Auburn trying to set the option to the wide side of the field. Gilbert just beat the blocker and was able to get one hand on Randy Campbell. Randy saw the play developing, but uh, Gilbert just came over the blocker and made the play single-handed, and Auburn now facing a long possession situation. Loss of two on the play. Third down, nine for the Tigers. The ball at their 26. They've got to go just outside the 34 for the first down. Campbell to throw. Instead, chooses James. James is in trouble. A lot of white shirts over there, and they bring him down at the 25. It'll be a loss of a yard. It was Tim Crow and Terry Hogue. Hogue up from his safety position, and Tim Crow over from his right defensive guard position. And War Eagle 5 is wondering, hey, we got to get things going. It looked for a moment like Chris Woods was wide open down the sideline as Hogue bumped him at the line and then let Woods go. He came up to make the play on the receiver from the backfield, and Woods was running free down the sideline, but Randy had no time to see him. Lewis Colbert in punt formation. Deep for Georgia will be Jimmy Harrell. He is a sophomore out of Somerville, South Carolina, averaging about 10 yards per return. Boy, what a kick. Colbert booms it back to the 24-yard line. May have been a clip there. I don't see a flag, but it's up to the 35-yard line. Looked like it could have possibly been a clip, but no flag was thrown, so it was not. 51-yard kick for Lewis Colbert. Georgia back in business now at their 35-yard line. With the wind at his back, Lewis really got into the punt. He may have overkicked his coverage a little bit. Harold, who leads the conference in number of punt returns, grabbed it and was able to bring it back for about a first down appeal. We'll be back with more right after this. First down, 10, Georgia. The ball at their own 36-yard line. 5.51 remaining in the first quarter. They'll send Herman Archie in motion to the right side. Pitch back to Herschel Walker. He gets a block. He's to the 40. Side steps one. Greg cut over very quickly, along with big number 95 for the Auburn Tigers. That will be Gerald Robinson to make the stop. Herschel picked up big yardage, though. He got on the corner, picked up about eight and a half or nine yards. Auburn uh, cannot allow Georgia to control the ball as they've been controlling in the first quarter here. That could be a major factor very quickly in this Paul. football game. Herschel already with 36 yards on nine carries. Two more yards, and he becomes the fourth all-time leading rusher in college football history. Second down and three. Georgia, the ball at the 43. Herschel is stacked up there. Unbelievable. He got the two yards on second effort on his own. He comes up, they hit him, and he just seems like he stopped, and then he spins away, and he's got two more yards when he falls forward. So he just moves into fourth place on the all-time rushing list in the history of college football. Passing and another, another, first, and another first down run. But let's see. Check the spot. They blew the ball dead before, uh, before Herschel fell forward. They said Auburn had him stacked up, and so uh, it'll be a third down possession play for Georgia. Winford Hood into the Georgia offensive line up front, so they'll only give Herschel the one yard. We're going to have a motion penalty, so Herschel won't get anything here, and he simply stops very wisely. And so Georgia will be penalized five yards. Looks like Hood, the new man in the offensive line, moved a little bit on the snap. And the left side of the line moved, and as a result now, Georgia going to face a third and about five and a half. A key situation for Auburn, as we mentioned in the pregame, we've mentioned it uh, repeatedly here in the first period. Georgia, with that first drive, set a tone for the game, and it's a tone Auburn cannot afford to let them continue. Auburn did not move the football on their first possession. Three plays and the punt by Colbert. Nevertheless, a good punt, 51 yards by Lewis Colbert. Georgia will have it now on their 40-yard line. We'll call it third and about six. Third and six at the four. Beautiful day here at Jordan Hare Stadium for the Auburn Tigers and the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Kevin Harris split wide to the right side. In the backfield is Walker and McCarthy. Last singer will throw. Has time, look. Oh, is it intercepted? No. Almost intercepted by David King, I believe it was, over there. Great, great pass defense by Auburn. Fine pass defense by the Auburn Tigers. That's one thing they were able to do early last week. They were able to make the Rutgers receivers here footsteps across the middle in the first quarter. That set the tone for the receivers. There you see the receiver breaking open over the middle. Bob Harris and Dennis Collier were there defending, and uh, as a result, the pass fell incomplete. Georgia can't convert, and the Tigers will get the ball back again 
Georgia's Broadway punting into the face of a stiff breeze. Clarence Kay was the Georgia tight end who was rudely welcomed to Auburn, Alabama by Bobby Harris out of Decatur, Georgia. Jim Broadway, he's a senior from Eustis, Florida. He will do the punting. A 40-yard net, which is an excellent net in punting. This one is high, a little wobbly. It will not go very far. It will bounce at the 24, gets a pretty good Georgia roll, and goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So that's where Auburn will take over. It is a 40-yard punt, and that's what Broadway's been doing. Well, and he got all of his net because Lionel James unable to handle the short, high knuckleball punt. It bounced about four or five yards downfield for the Georgia Bulldogs. As a result, Auburn will start at their 20-yard line. Four minutes, two seconds to go in the first quarter. Georgia with a 3-0 lead on the strength of what is being called now a 20-yard field goal by Kevin Butler. O'Neill, James, and Jackson in the backfield behind Randy Campbell. Campbell with the ball. He's in big trouble. The Georgia defensive line just poured through Auburn's offensive front. Campbell is going to have about a four-yard loss back to the 16-yard line. Really, the play never had a chance to develop. The pitch was taken away very quickly. You'll see on the replay and uh, pursuit from the backside, catching Randy Campbell before the play can develop as... Uh, Georgia just able to pour through from the backside. That's the pursuit Stan coming from Stan Dooley and Will Dooley Ford. Really coming to his own this year since the injury to Jimmy Payne. Dooley is a junior from Tacoa, Georgia, and he has really come on, as we said, after Payne and Tommy Thurston were injured earlier in the season. Jackson goes in motion to the left side. Campbell will throw. Has completed it out to the 22-23 yard line to Ed West, the junior from Leeton, Alabama. Call it the 22. It's a gain of six, Paul, but it's still going to leave us a third and eight situation. Well, they got back to the, the lost yardage on the play before. There you see the play coming directly at you. Ed West from his tight end slot. Campbell rolling to his right. Delivers the ball right on the money. West with uh, not a whole lot of room to work on the sideline, but they did work back up to the 22-yard line. So third down, about nine or eight and a half yards to go. Chris Woods in the Auburn lineup comes split uh, to the near side of the field. The tight end is West. In motion is Jackson to the far side. Campbell drops straight back. Throws over the middle. Completes it. Chris Woods. I believe if they give him the spot, he'll have the first down. Let's see where they put it. It's going to be very, very it is close. Very close. They mark it just over the 30-yard line. The marker on the far side is just over the 30-yard line. It's a matter of how much uh, of the ball they mark over the 30. It's going to be very, very close when they bring the chains across. Tommy Thurston, who is a junior out of Jacksonville, Florida, and who has a brother, Ted, who plays for Georgia Tech, up to make the stop for Georgia. And we'll see the measurement and see what happens on this Tiger possession. They stretch the change. It is very, very close. It is a first, first down. down, Auburn. The Georgia players do not even like the measurement. They're sort of uh, dickering with the officials there. Just the point of the ball touching the stick. That's as close as you can get. Chris Woods had plenty of uh, room past the marker when he ran his pattern, but he came back to the ball as he caught the ball. Thurston hitting him from behind. It makes it very tough for the officials to mark it. They got the mark, and as a result, Auburn gets the first down. 2.54 to go in the first quarter. Campbell, the quarterback, after that first down play by Woods. Bo Jackson has it. He is across the 31, maybe to the 32. Kevin Jackson and Tim Crow, and those two guys work you over in the middle. 6'2", 245, and 6'1", 235, both seniors, and they make the stop. Auburn's seventh snap of the game. That's the first time they've been able to get the ball to Bo Jackson. Georgia is obviously trying to take the pitch away on the option. As a result, Auburn uh, to try to, trying to run Jackson up the middle that time, and they'll be devising some ways to get the ball to Bo Jackson today. I noticed, Paul, that they're sending Terry Hogue almost every time when Bo goes in motion, so they'll keep an eye on him today. They give inside to O'Neill. O'Neill has room. Ron O'Neill up the middle. He's at the 45, down to the 42-yard line of the Georgia Bulldogs. That's one of the uh, deficiencies of the wide tackle six. If you can hit inside very quickly, you can break into the secondary, and that's why the wishbone is a very difficult uh, offense to handle in the wide tackle six. Once he breaks by the first man, he's got 10 or 12 yards. Jeff Sanchez coming over to save a touchdown. Ron O'Neill breaks it for 25 yards on his first carry. I mentioned a minute ago that they send Hogue with the pitch man, and that's exactly what happened. He overran the play. O'Neill had all kinds of room up the middle. Not enough to get him by the shirt tail. 153 to go in the quarter. Tigers first down at the Georgia 43. Campbell will keep. He has James on the outside. Randy keeps it instead. He's out to the 30-yard line. 
Auburn had total domination on the right flank that time. Bo Jackson and Ed West blocking downfield. I think those were the two. If we see it again, we'll check and see who cleared out the pass on the right side. Just a wall down the right side as Campbell turned it inside after the fake to O'Neill. Ronnie Harris up to make the stop on the play, but it is going to be very close. It is a first down. 12-yard run for Randy that time. First down, minute 44. There you see the story. Georgia leading three to nothing. Long count by Campbell. Drops back. Has time and has room. Will throw. Complete! To Chris Woods, the junior out of Birmingham, inside the 10-yard line of Georgia. When the wishbone is working well on the ground, you have to single cover the wide receiver. There's no way to defense the run unless you single cover the wide receiver. They playing a zone on the right side, on the right side defensively for Georgia. And Chris Woods just got in behind the zone, as you see in the seam. Terry Sanchez again making the tackle. A 22-yard play. Auburn now first and goal at the 10-yard line. The book on Randy Campbell is he's not big, he's not fast. All he does is beat you. Four for four on the afternoon passing. A minute 18 to go. The Tigers have it first and goal at the Georgia 9. They give to O'Neill. O'Neill to the 5, 6-yard line. Tommy Thurston from his linebacker spot comes over, gets some help from Sanchez. Sanchez out of Yorba Linda, California. He is a junior college transfer from there. This is very much what Auburn wanted to do, establish the running game. Every time Auburn snaps the ball, that's a snap to Herschel Walker. Can't touch the ball. It's a snap the Auburn defense is resting. And uh, Auburn wants to be able to dominate with the running game. And this second series, they've been able to do that by move and moving the ball down the field. The pitch to Jackson. Jackson jumps one man. He's to the four to the three-yard line. One official appeared to be signaling a touchdown as he crossed the five. I think the official might have been out of alignment there, but... Uh, Jackson hurdling the line of scrimmage, a fine individual move by Bo Jackson to find any running room at all as Georgia got penetration on the right defensive side. Jeff Parks and Ron Middleton, the tight end to flip-flop. It will be Middleton out, Parks in now. Parks, of course, the standout freshman out of Gardendale High School. 17, 16 seconds. We don't know if we'll get this playoff now. Auburn will call a timeout. Timeout, Auburn. The ball resting at the three-yard line, third and goal from that point. Randy would have liked to have let the clock wound down and come over and talk to the coaches once the confusion was initiated in the huddle. However, the snap clock uh, was running down before the time in the quarter. As a result, he was unable to do that. We'll be back with this crucial third down play for the Tigers. We'll see it right after this. Here's the story, third and goal, 14 seconds to go in the quarter. Randy Campbell all alone. He's just got to outrun one man. Can he do it? Touchdown, Auburn! Randy Campbell has scored from the three-yard line. Fine individual effort by Randy Campbell. The reverse, the naked reverse by the quarterback as he faked the Jackson, took the entire backfield the other way. Everyone going that way. And watch the Georgia linebackers. They cleared out. One man stayed at home. He was unable to catch Randy Campbell. Dale Carver, he runs for the corner. Campbell just diving and uh, getting the ball over the goal line as his knee touched at about the one, but the ball penetrating the goal line. An 80-yard, 10-play drive, a very impressive drive, mixing pass and run for Auburn. Six seconds left in the quarter. Al Del Greco makes it. Seven to three, Auburn. The extra point appeared to be blocked but it just swept over. Someone might have gotten a hand on the extra point, but it just swept over the crossbar. As you said a moment ago, a very, very impressive 10-play drive, 80 yards. The Tigers looked like they really had their game plan in gear then. Well, they really did, and they made the wishbone go inside. Against the wide tackle fix, you've got to go inside or you'll never be able to set the option. And uh, Rod O'Neill with a big 25-yard run, probably the key play, along with a touchdown run by Randy Campbell by scoring on that particular play, Auburn will get to use the wind on this kickoff also and hopefully either kick it through the end zone or be able to bottle the Bulldogs up. You know, we mentioned a minute ago about Randy Campbell. He's not big. He's not real fast. All he does is beat you. And that time, Randy at 5'11", 175 pounds, has a naked reverse against 6'2", 215, Dale Carver. It was a race to the finish line. And as we said, Campbell just beat him to the line. Well, Carver made a fine defensive play and forced it very deep. 
But uh, Campbell was able to sprint for the corner before the secondary could react because they all reacted to the far corner with Bo Jackson. Auburn has taken a 7-3 lead on Randy Campbell's three-yard touchdown run. Al Del Greco with the kickoff. It goes deep into the end zone, and it will be down there by number 23, Keith Montgomery. He'll keep it there, and Georgia will take over at their own 20-yard line. The Auburn Tigers, with six seconds to go in the quarter, lead the Georgia Bulldogs by a score of 7-3. Quickly, let's mention what a special day this is on the Auburn campus. Coach Ralph Goodjordan, head coach at Auburn for 25 years through some of the glory days, probably the greatest glory days of Auburn football, being uh, inducted posthumously into the National Football Hall of Fame today is uh, his widow Evelyn uh, Jordan, along with a lot of the uh, uh, Jordan family, will be here. Now you see, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, we'll see some great banners today. <laughs> and there's the young man they're talking about. The give instead is to... Oh, great play by Chris McCarthy. Chris McCarthy all the way out to the 45, out to the 48-yard line as the quarter comes to a close. McCarthy looked like he was stopped in there in the line, but it took Tim Drinker to run him down from behind before he got all the way out to the 47-yard line. That is the end of the first quarter of play with the score. Auburn... Before we take the break of the quarter, we'll check the replay. Auburn had to play defense well, but a missed tackle right at the point of attack. He was able to bounce off the block, move outside, and Tim Drinkard, as you said, had to run him down from the secondary, or the fullback might have gone all the way. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Auburn 7, Georgia 3. We'll be back in a moment. Start of the second quarter, Auburn leading Georgia. 7-3, to three. the Dogs have it first and 10 at their 47 after a great run, 27 yards by Chris McCarthy. They give inside to Walker. Walker to midfield, and that's all. It is a gain of three. Now, Herschel Walker has moved into fourth place on the all-time NCAA rushing list. He has just passed former Heisman Trophy winner George Rogers of South Carolina. And there you see the young man who's just given Auburn a 7-3 to three lead, Randy Campbell. Herschel Walker with 41 yards thus far in the game. The fullback McCarthy with 43. Of course, the ball cop is coming on that 21-yard run in the final play of the first period. Second down, seven for Georgia. Last singer pitches to Walker. Jeff Jackson. Jeff Jackson. And looked like Tim Drinkard maybe over there to make the stop. Initially, it appeared the option was well set by Georgia that time, but excellent pursuit by Auburn. Jeff Jackson broke through a block and was able to stop her to Walker. Uh, after only a couple of yards gained, about third and four now to go. Interesting graphic that you just saw. 32 running backs have won the Heisman Trophy. Walker has now passed 28 of them. I wonder who will win it this year. Third and four, Georgia. In motion is Herman Archie, the freshman from Columbus. The give is to Walker. Great move on the inside. He's free. He's at the 20. Just watch him. That's all you can do. That's all you can do when the kid gets to the outside. It is a touchdown for the Georgia Bulldogs. Again, Georgia sent motion to the right side, the wide side of the field. Auburn sent a man with that motion. Herschel Walker on the draw play, cut it back against the green. You'll see the motion man come by, moving to the wide side of the field. Walker gets it on the delay. They, every, all the motion went to the right. Walker cut back against the green, got by Ballou and Jackson, and broke a tackle by Drinkard. And after that, it was just a foot race, and uh, very few people can win a foot race with Herschel Walker. 6'1", 222 pounds, and the guy can run like a deer. Touchdown, Walker. Kevin Butler in to attempt the point after. The kick is up and good. Georgia has retaken the lead in a matter of moments. Georgia 10, the Auburn Tigers 7. And Paul, is, as we said moments ago, we'll get another look at it. Watch the move at the line of scrimmage. Uh, last week, Georgia very right-handed going to the right side, especially when it was the wide side of the field. This time, Ursa Walker cutting back after moving to his right, cut back against the grain, and uh, after breaking two tackles at the line, able to go to this one. We'll be back. A 47-yard touchdown run by Herschel Walker of Riceville, Georgia, has given the Dogs a 10-7 lead over Auburn. Kevin Butler with the kickoff. It will go deep into the left corner of the end zone, goes out of the end zone. Lionel James will watch it, and Auburn will be in business now at their own 20-yard line. Well, you see what a factor the wind is as he kicked it completely through the end zone. Moments ago, he was kicking it to about the 5-yard line. A Georgia drive. 80 yards in four plays. Herschel Walker, 47 yards for the touchdown. Georgia back in the lead now by a score of 10-7. Auburn back on offense. And the Auburn Tigers, again, will want to come out and try to run some of the clock and keep the ball for a while. This time they'll be moving against a very stiff 
20 to 25 mile per hour breeze. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia has just retaken a 10 to 7 lead. Auburn now first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Second man through, or first man through the line of scrimmage is Ron O'Neill. He gets about two yards on the play, so it'll be second down and eight for the Auburn Tigers. Tim Crow over to make the stop for the Bulldogs. Greg Crabb will check into the Auburn lineup now at the fullback position. O'Neill will get a breather. Second down seven for the Tigers. Second and a long seven. Campbell will keep it. Campbell is in trouble. Terry Hogue is over there quickly along with Stan Dooley. They bring him down at the 25-yard line. It's a gain, uh, we'll call it about two, maybe three on the play. They'll mark it down right near the 25. At, uh, actually touching the 25, so it'll be a third down five. The wide tackle six. Defense that time playing as it's uh, supposed to, as it's grown up. They were able to string the option wide. Randy had nowhere to go with the football. Terry Hogue uh, right where he would like to have turned up and making the play, so it'll be third down five for Auburn at their 25-yard line. Greg Pratt has entered the Auburn lineup, replacing Ron O'Neill at fullback. Third and five, Auburn. Campbell. Pass to, oh, to Lionel James. James will have the first down. I thought Lionel was going to drop it, or does he have the first down? He had to go very deep in the backfield to receive the pass. Going to be close. the lateral. It appeared they may have knocked him out. Half they a yard or so short of first down yardage. <laughs> So Auburn will punt with 12 minutes, 44 seconds remaining in the first half. Lewis Colbert in. Jimmy Harrell will go deep for Georgia. And with that last touchdown, Herschel sets another record. The rear touchdown responsibility for Georgia actually tied at the record 49. He ties the Heisman Trophy winner, I believe, Frank Sinkwich. Frankie Flatfoot Sinkwich. Harrell will let this one bounce. It will bounce. Now he'll pick it up, and, uh, well, I thought he was going to return it. Instead, he wisely falls on it at the 35-yard uh, line. The punt, only 36 yards, but no return for Georgia. So Georgia will be in possession now at their own 35-yard line. Coach Vince Dooley very animated on the sideline, and he met Mr. Harrell as he came off the field and had a few words with him about grabbing that punt on the bounce. It was a short kick, took a couple of hops. Harrell thought maybe he could possibly pick up a return, but grabbed it and wisely fell to the ground at the 34-yard line. 12.32 to go in the first half. Georgia with the ball, first and 10 after that Lewis Colbert punt of 36 yards. Last singer fakes to Walker. Will throw deep to Herman Archie. Incomplete. Good defense over there on that side by David King. The Auburn cornerback stayed step for step with a very fleet wide receiver, Herman Archie. Archie is a speedster, but King had perfect position there. Might have been some inadvertent contact, but King had the inside position on the football and uh, probably a good no call by the official on the scene. Excellent coverage by David King. We saw Coach Sonny Smith of the Auburn basketball team in the press box. His team worked out at 10.30 this morning. And don't forget, Auburn basketball begins the 26th of this month with a big game against Alabama-Birmingham. Second down, 10. They go to Walker. Walker is slipped the tackle by Wallace and does get back to the line of scrimmage. But big Steve, uh, Jim James Wallace, over there had a hand on him. Paul couldn't bring him down. Wallace really made the tackle as they tried to go wide to Herschel. They had the blocking pattern set. Wallace got in behind the blockers, forced Walker deep, uh, and allowed the Auburn pursuit to cut Herschel Walker off on the corner. The play actually gained about a yard. 95 yards now. We show him with uh, 92 yards. Uh, rushing thus far. Herschel Walker still in the first half of play with 11.50 to go in the first half. Big conversion down for the dog. Third and nine. 11.48 remaining in the half. Georgia leading 10 to 7. Last singer will throw. Looks over the middle. Incomplete. One of the officials got banged down there by <laughs> Gerald, or rather Doug Smith. The pass intended for Herschel Walker coming across the middle. The official might have screened him out as he screened uh, Doug Smith out trying to retreat uh, from the line of scrimmage. We don't think we'll see a replay this time. Yes, we will. You'll see him trying to find Walker over the middle. Watch the official as he moves back into your picture from the right side of the screen. He screened Herschel off from the ball. Herschel couldn't see the ball coming, and he dropped the ball in the middle of the field. Jim Broadway into punt for Georgia. He'll hit it from about his 25. Short, wobbly kick comes way over to the right side. He shanked it there. It's going to get a good Georgia roll, though, and will bounce inside the 25 
down to about the 23-yard line. So Broadway not kicking well at all. It's a 41-yard punt and no return, so he came out pretty well on that one. Well, he got the bounce, the Georgia bounce, as it spiraled down very low. He uh, might have been too conscious of the big wind at his back that time, and it, off, it uh, messed up his timing just a bit. We'll be back with more of the Georgia-Auburn game right after this. 24 to go in the first half. Auburn in business now. First and 10 at their 23. Campbell spins. Comes to this side. Pitches to Bo. Bo jumps one man. Can't get past the other one. He hurdled over number Tony Flack. No, number eight, Anthony Tony Flack out of Greensboro, North Carolina. But it was Kerry Hogue who came up to make the stop. Coming out of the Auburn lineup, number uh, 78, that is Steve Wallace, the big freshman out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Looked like he was holding his shoulder. Tony Flack made a great play that time. Lionel James had blocked him on the ground. He got up, came over Lionel James, and tripped Bo Jackson up. Second down, eight for Auburn. James in motion. Campbell will throw. Looks over the middle. Ooh! Intended for Ed West, just out of reach. So it will be third down and eight now for Auburn. Auburn throwing a bit more this week. Coach Dye told us a couple of weeks ago he intended to use the pass more in the Auburn offense. Ed West had just a step on the defender. It appeared Lionel James had a step coming up the sideline. Georgia That's given up almost 200 yards per game passing uh, in passing deep offense to the other team. And they stand uh, very low in the standings in the Southeastern Conference. Tenth in the SEC. Ninth, okay. Ninth or tenth makes no difference. They're giving up 200 yards a game. That's a lot of yardage. Third and eight. Let's see if Auburn can get some here. 10.40 to play in the first half. Somebody moved on the Auburn side. It looked like number 71 for Auburn, Jay Jacobs. I think maybe he came out of his stance just a split second too soon. They're feeding War Eagle 5 a dog biscuit. <laughs> for right if the now. Play was, if the play was not blown dead, Georgia would decline this penalty, and Auburn would have to punt it away against the win. We'll see what they're going to do in the situation, but Jimmy Harrell is already on the field, so if Georgia has the option, they'll decline the penalty, and Auburn will be facing a punting situation against the win once again. That is exactly what will happen. 10.34 to play here in the first half. Georgia leading Auburn 10-7, and Lewis Colbert is in to punt for the Tigers. Deep, of course, for Georgia will be number 82, Jimmy Harrell. 10 minutes, 28 seconds, the clock moving here in the first half of play. Georgia is leading the Auburn Tigers 10-7. Colbert gets it away. It is high, and it is a good, good one. Harrell calls for the fair catch and takes it at his 32-yard line. 43-yard punt by Lewis Colbert, and no return. A fine punt against the wind. Good coverage. He got up high and turned over nicely in the, uh, into the face of the wind. Harrell, who doesn't like to make the fair catch, had to make it there, play in a rough sun field. So with 10-15 to play in the first half, Georgia will take over once again on offense. The last time they had the ball, Paul, it didn't take them long to score. Only a couple of plays before Herschel Walker broke that 47-yard touchdown run. This time, Walker is not in the lineup. Instead, Carney Norris is in there along with Barry Young. Blastinger gives to Young. Young up to about the 35-yard line. And I think we have a flag. And it looks like this may have been a face mask. We'll wait and see. It may be once again. Make no mistake about it, the... Uh, the Georgia second unit offensive backfield is a very good offensive backfield. Barry Young with a fine average. He has started at times at fullback. And Carney Norris, of course, a man who has played uh, at times for four years. He was very highly recruited. He was their starting tailback at times during his freshman year. But, of course, when he was a sophomore, uh, came Herschel Walker. Barry Young picked up three yards on that carry. That would have made it a second down seven for Georgia. But we're going to see a few more yards tacked on because, as Paul said, of that inadvertent face mask penalty on the Tigers. We'll see if they call it a flagrant face mask or the five-yard variety, and it will be a five-yard penalty for Auburn as we check the uh, official. And it will be a, a face mask violation or a headgear violation, I guess, as they call it this year. You cannot tackle by the headgear at all. It will be second down and two yards to go for Georgia. So that first down play, normally a three-yard gain, would have only made it second and seven is now only second and two split wide to the left side is chuck jones the senior from valdosta in motion is north the give to barry young young driving hard good leg drive gets him out to the 44 yard line a gain of four and a georgia first down 
tenth first down in the first half for the Georgia Bulldogs. Of course, they got six on their first possession. As you see, the 86th meeting between Georgia and Auburn, the longest uninterrupted series in the South. Georgia and Auburn brought college football to the South. The series was tied until two years ago. Georgia has won the last two games. What Carney Norris, of course, has gone in this series at tailback, along with Barry Young at fullback. The pitch to Norris. Norris got a good block on the corner. Let's see if he can cut it up. He does not. Good job over there on that corner by Greg Tut. Greg Tut and Chuck Jones were going at it one-on-one. -on -one. Tut fought him off and was over there to make the tackle along with Dennis Collier. Good job of running by a fresh Carney Norris. He squared his shoulders up when he got to the corner and picked up an extra two or three yards on second effort. There you see the statistics on Carney Norris. He's handled the ball 44 times for Georgia this year, and that's uh, not bad for the second unit back playing behind Herschel Walker. Carney Norris, of course, understands his role is to give Herschel Walker a rest. He's a senior and a veteran out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Second down, seven. To give this to Norris, running hard straight up the middle behind that big Georgia offensive line. He's across midfield into Auburn territory. They'll spot it at about the 48-yard line of Auburn. Norris picks up five yards, third and two at the Auburn 48. Ben Thomas made the stop. As you see the graphic, Georgia averaging nearly 280 yards rushing per game, almost uh, five yards per running play, four and a half yards per running play. And that starts with that offensive line. They are big and very strong. 8.54 to go in the half. Georgia facing a third and three. Last singer pitches to Norris. He won't get it. He has stopped at the line of scrimmage. The Tigers have held. John Lastinger very slow getting up. He took a shot early as he came out on the option. Check the replay. They run the option to the short side, the left side of the field. Fake to the fullback. He's hit by Jeff Jackson and carried down very hard. Carney Norris, as a result of Lastinger not being able to make it to the corner, is met by a host of players as he tried to reach the corner on the left side. So Auburn holds, and the Tigers will now get the ball. Lionel James will try to give him field position. Greg Tut, Dennis Collier, Bob Harris, Greg Carr, all of them there on the stop on a key third down play for Georgia. Broadway now into kick. He will get this one away. It is very high, and I think James will call for a fair catch. He does, has it at his 17-yard line. It's a 31-yard kick, a short punt for Jim Broadway, the senior from Eustis, Florida. So with eight minutes to go in the first half, Auburn takes over to 17. We'll be back with more of the Auburn-Georgia game right after this. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Auburn trailing the dogs, 10 to seven. Randy Campbell has his backfield behind him and set to bring the wishbone offense out of the huddle. Campbell will keep, is under pressure, turns it up. He's to the 18, across the 20, where he's ridden down by a trio of Georgia defenders. Jeff Sanchez leading the way, along with Tim Crow, and looks like Dale Carver also over from his end spot to make the stop. Fine job of running by Randy Campbell, though he got everything he could get out of that play. Campbell now uh, on that six-yard run has a total up to 17 yards net for the day on six carries. And that's after losing yardage on his first two carries of the day. It's a gain of about six yards, a good run by Randy, and it'll make a second down four for the Tigers, who would like nothing better than to run out the clock and get some points here as the half comes to a close. Nate Taylor, the senior linebacker, in for Georgia. He and Thurston man the linebacker spots at this time. Give us to the second man through. It looks like... It was Bo Jackson. Bo had no place to go, fought hard, maybe got a yard, maybe two. Counter play never developed at all that time. Uh, very slow developing. The hole they really never developing. They were, the backfield did not mesh well on this play. Bo Jackson on his fifth carry now with a total of eight yards after that one-yard game. Auburn uh, with a good running attack, averaging 254 yards on the ground per game this year. Third and three, big down for the Tigers. The ball at the 24. Campbell keeps it. He is close. Randy Campbell on the inside fake to Ron O'Neill. He is close to the first down. Again, it will depend on the spot. Vince Dooley anxiously looking on from his sideline. It is an Auburn first down. First down, Tigers, the ball at the 28-yard line. Fifth first down of the game for Auburn. Georgia, so conscious of the sweep, and uh, a lot of time the running lane is going to be there for Randy Campbell, and he's looking for it now, as you can tell, on this possession. He's been able to turn it up twice, the second time running for first down yardage. And, Paul, as you mentioned in the pregame, Georgia, with that wide tackle stick, it is a defense that can have some problems with a good wishbone offense, and certainly the Tigers have proven that they have that by this, the ninth game of the year, the tenth game of the year. 
That is Lionel James. He is out to the 30. It's a gain of maybe only a yard. Dan Dooley on his defensive end spot over along with Tim Crow to make the stop. Auburn using the two freshman tight ends on this series, Jeff Parks and Ron Middleton, and settling the plays back and forth with the tight ends. Actually, they've been using a two tight end set throughout most of this series. The left guard for Georgia, Kevin Jackson, is out. Kenneth Sims is in the ballgame. Second and eight for Auburn. Campbell gives to Jackson. Jackson has a little room across the 35. After the 37-yard line, he is close to another first down. It'll bring up another third and short situation. Key possession for Auburn this time. The Tigers were under five and a half minutes to play in the first half. Would very much like to convert here and have a nice drive and use up most of the rest of the time in the first half. Auburn three out of six on first on uh, conversion down or possession down plays thus far in the first half. It is third and two. The ball at the 37-yard line. Five minutes, six seconds to go here in the first half. O'Neal, James, and Jackson in the backfield. It's a fumble. And I believe Georgia will have the football. Bo Jackson across the line. Had looked like close to first down yardage. But Jeff Sanchez is up from his free safety position to make the fumble recovery. Check the replay. Bo Jackson coming through off the left side on the power play from the wishbone. Got one step, tried to dive, a helmet on the football, and it popped clean, and it popped right into the Georgia secondary. Really no one there for Auburn except Ed West, who was out on a pattern, and he had no shot at the football. Georgia with a great field position now at the Auburn 41. You talked about the turnovers and the takeaways. Georgia leading the nation in takeaways. The Tigers leading the nation in giving up the football, and that's what happened. First down, Georgia. The pitch to Walker. Walker to the 40. Run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. At the 40. It is a gain at that point, or at the 35, a gain of six yards. And that gives him unofficially 100 yards already rushing in this football game. A key defensive series for Auburn now. As Georgia, with the clock stopped in the out-of-bounds play, at 4.45 to go in the first half. Second down, about four at the Auburn 35-yard line. In at right guard for Georgia, James Brown. He is a junior offensive guard out of Montgomery, prepped at Jeff Davis High School. Second and four, Georgia. McCarthy in motion to give to Walker. Walker hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, and gets the customary two-yard gain. Very, very nearly impossible to stop the guy from getting a yard or two every time he touches the football. Well, we noted earlier the Georgia offense. Really, both Georgia units are dominated by juniors and seniors. Their offensive line, all juniors and seniors. And uh, to stop her to Walker, you've got to get some kind of penetration. It's tough to do with this veteran offensive line. Four minutes, 17 seconds. Big down, big, big down. Third and two. Georgia leading 10 to 7 as we near halftime. Last finger will throw. It is incomplete, almost intercepted by David King. Great defensive job by the youngster who came over and very nearly picked the pass off. King had both hands on the football. He tried to roll over and cushion the fall with the body and get his body under the football and couldn't quite do it. The ball grazing the ground. I think you'll see it here. Interesting play call on third and yes, short. Instead of going with Herschel Walker, Georgia elected to throw. He wanted to throw deep. And the man was covered. Good coverage. He tried to then hit the fullback coming from the backfield. And good coverage again by David King as he stayed with his own. It will be a 50-yard field goal attempt now for Kevin Butler. A 50-yard attempt for Butler near the middle of the field. He has a 59-yarder to his credit this year. Has the wind at his back also. The kick is up. It is high enough. It is long enough. And it is good. Georgia, 13, Auburn, 7. Kevin Butler, we mentioned in the pregame, Paul, the kicking game was nowhere near the mismatch that we saw last week. Georgia brings the kicking game with them. Vince Dooley said Auburn may have the best kicking game in the conference, but I think Pat Dye might have disagreed and said the Georgia kicking game is the best in the conference. Of course, uh, their punter, Broadway, not a great average, but almost no returns against him. And Kevin Butler, uh, on a still day, kicks off through the end zone. With uh, today's win, he might be capable of a 63 or 64-yard field goal. The Georgia drive, only eight yards after the turnover in four plays. A uh, 50-yard field goal by Butler, and that sets it at Georgia 13, Auburn 7. Now with four minutes to go in the first half. Something that you mentioned, it was an interesting third down call. A third and two situation third and a short two. Instead of going to Herschel, they try the pass. You're thinking there. Well, 
They were looking long. Everyone very conscious of Herschel in any short yarded situation, and they had the tight end breaking deep, Clarence Cave. As a result, uh, I think last thing it was going for the kill that time. He was going to try to hit Kay Long. Kay was covered. He found his secondary receiver, but he was also covered in the zone by uh, David King. With 3.56 remaining in the first half, Georgia has just taken the 13 7 lead on a 50 yard field goal by sophomore Kevin Butler. He is set to kick off for Georgia. He gets a foot into it. It is high and long. And going out of the end zone, Lionel James, no chance for a return there. So Auburn will take over at their 20-yard line with three minutes, 56 seconds to go. And, Paul, what do you do here? Try to get down get a field goal, or you try to use some clock or what? Well, there's a lot of time to go, almost four minutes to go. Auburn basically in the same position they were in a moment ago. They need to move the football, keep the defense resting on the sideline, and get some points, some momentum before halftime if they can. But they don't want to give the ball up quickly uh, by any means. They would like to keep the ball as long as they can here. Glorious day for football at Jordan-Hare Stadium. 3.56 to play in the first half. Auburn on the offensive attack with Mike Edwards split wide to the left side and a full house Tiger backfield. Greg Pratt in for Ron O'Neill. Pratt will not get it. Instead, it is Campbell. This is the first time in a ball game for number 87 for Georgia. That is Jimmy Payne. He is a senior All-America candidate, a defensive tackle, back off a knee injury. Will Forts made the stop there. But I know Georgia fans are glad to see Big Payne back in the lineup. Well, I'm sure they are. He had arthroscopic surgery just three and a half weeks ago, so he's coming back very quickly. Fine play by Randy Campbell, but great pursuit by Forts. Auburn going without a tight end now. No tight end in the wishbone formation. The full house backfield trying to spread the Georgia defense even farther. Second down, seven for Auburn. 3.20 to play in the half. Georgia leading 13 to seven. Carroll is the wide out to the far side. Edwards this side. Mixed up in the Auburn backfield. And after that impressive drive for a touchdown, Auburn has seemed to have bogged down somewhat offensively. Kevin Jackson uh, really didn't need to do a lot on that play to smell it out. Randy Campbell and his fullback, Greg Pratt, bumped into each other, or rather Bo Jackson. Joe Bo got the uh, carry, but still only after the 25-yard line. Second time we've seen Auburn on a delay or counterplay, missed the mesh in the backfield. The hole was there early, but of course, uh, after the collision between the quarterback and the running back, the hole closed up on Bo Jackson. One of our camera people working on today's game, doing an excellent job. The give in the inside. That is big Greg Pratt. I say big. He is 5'7", 220 pounds, and a sophomore out of Albany, Georgia. Hit first there by Jimmy Payne, number 87. Well, Georgia, I think, got what they wanted. They wanted the ball to go back to the inside. Pratt knocked down just short of first down yardage. It'll be fourth and just inches to go here. The Auburn punting unit not on as yet. Georgia leading by six. Two minutes, ten seconds to go in the first half. And Auburn uh, still waiting to make a decision. The ball not marked ready for play, and now it is at 2.05. And let's see what the Auburn decision is going to be. The punting unit is going to go in. I think at this point, you really have no decision. You don't want to take a chance on giving Georgia the ball in field goal range for Butler. That would put you down 16-7 to seven at the best at the half. And now... As a result of Auburn delaying getting the punting unit in, Georgia did not get the punt return unit in. They had to use a timeout. So Georgia calls timeout now with a minute 53 to go in the first half. Georgia will have the wind at their back when they receive the punt from Lewis Colbert. A very, very important series in this football game coming up when Georgia receives its punt. Georgia leading Auburn 13 to 7. There you see the clock. 153 to go in the half. And now Auburn apparently is going to go for it. This is a very interesting situation. The Auburn offensive unit going back onto the field now. Now Georgia trying to get a couple of defensive substitutions. Really only Jimmy Harrell going out as they uh, run an extra defensive secondary man onto the field. Jeff Sanchez comes back in. It is fourth down. Just barely inches to go. They may be going for the offside play. A little cat and mouse between Auburn head coach Pat Dye and Georgia head coach Vince Dooley. Auburn sends in the punt team, now sends in the offense. Fourth down, about two inches for an Auburn first down. The ball, the nose of the football couldn't be more than two inches outside the 30. That's all Auburn needs for the first down. It is a big, big gamble here with two minutes and less to play in the first half. Campbell has it. Randy Campbell is across the 30 to the 31. Still, though, Paul, a very big gamble. A tremendous gamble at this stage in the football game. You're trailing the number one team in the nation by less than a touchdown. Two minutes to go in the first half of play. 
this that could be the catalyst for Auburn. It could give them momentum if they can turn it into something going into halftime in this football game. Does this give them the confidence that they'll need if they can move the football in a serious situation, though? It really may. Late in the game, it may pay off. Later in the year, it could really pay off. The give on the inside. Campbell faked it to O'Neill. Instead, kept it himself on that first down play. Fought maybe for a yard. Uh, looked very close to only a yard gain. Freddie Gilbert and Will Fort over there to make the stop and it'll be a second down and eight they'll credit Randy with a two yard game before he was thrown back Auburn may like to throw the ball here and if they didn't make it perhaps run on third down and make Georgia use a timeout or let the clock run out but a, a key play here and let's see what they do a twin set to the wide side of the field with James and Woods both out there and now Jackson double comes. wing to a double wing situation and now Auburn wants a timeout haven't seen that formation and maybe that wasn't what we were supposed to see Auburn had trouble getting set as they wanted to go the double wing with two receivers wide on either side. No tight end, a single setback behind Randy Campbell. And uh, Randy Campbell a little disgusted having to use an Auburn timeout there. 58 seconds remaining, and I'm sure he's uh, doubly disgusted, if that's a good phrase, and having to use a timeout after he showed Georgia the formation. Auburn coaching staff and a little bit of consternation on, their, on our near sideline. The conference on the sideline did not take long. Randy Campbell quickly back uh, to the huddle. And, of course, Auburn has not used some uh, all of their weapons in their arsenal this year offensively. There are a lot of things you can do out of the wishbone uh, of a tricky variety, shall we say. Uh, this may be the occasion where one of those uh, so-called trick plays might come into play here. Under a minute to go in the first half, trailing by six. Auburn would certainly like to move the ball down to within Al Del Greco's field goal range. Del Greco certainly has a range of up to 45 yards, uh, I would say, maybe possibly a few more yards. Maybe not against the wind, though. It depends on what the wind does. It's gusting into the face of Auburn. We look at 58 seconds to go in the half. Auburn will have the football, and they'll face a second down and eight. Campbell spins, cuts it up, and has nowhere to go. Ron O'Neill trying to block Freddie Gilbert. And Big 71, Kevin Jackson, he doesn't do a good job. And when that happens, those two guys can bring anybody down. That play sort of set up a little strange also. Now Georgia is going to use a timeout here. They'll have one remaining as Auburn faces a third and long. Uh, Randy Campbell running against the motion of Bo Jackson. Jackson came in motion back to the left. The play went to the right side. Paul Bo Jackson with eight carries in the half. Unusual or customary? Uh, that's about that's about right for uh, what we've seen this year out of the wishbone. But Georgia's been able to shut throw down pretty well, holding to 21 yards. And they've made Campbell keep the ball a number of times on the option. When Auburn's run the option, they've forced Campbell to keep it. Randy's run the ball 11 times already in the first half, and that's very out of line. Lionel James has only gotten the ball three times uh, out of the backfield for nine yards in the first half. Perhaps the Georgia defense figuring that Randy Campbell, who is somewhat slight of build, perhaps could not take the punishment they could dish out over the 60 minutes of the football game. And with that wide tackle six, they can put several players on him on any given play. Well, besides that, they don't want to let the faster men, James and Jackson, get the ball on the corner. And if they can take away the pitch, they uh, very much would like to make the quarterback keep the ball. Third down and seven for the Auburn Tigers. The ball at their own 34 with 44 seconds to play in the half. And Georgia leading. They give on the inside the big Ron O'Neill. Ron dives across one man, Will Fort. Fort probably got the hand up that tripped him up, though, and brings him down at the 43. Clock stops on the first down. Check the replay quickly as Auburn goes without a huddle. The hole was there off the right side. A man just enough to trip him up and keep him from going for big yardage. We're back to live action. Randy Campbell back to pass. Has to scramble out of the pocket. Cannot get out of bounds. He's trying to get out of bounds on the far sideline, but big... Terry Hogue and big Jeff Sanchez, and these are big guys for defensive backfield people. They are over to make the stop. And Auburn had to use their last time out as Randy was unable to get out, out of bounds. He was forced out of the pocket. Once he was forced out of the pocket, heading for the sideline, but as you said, Hogue able to cut him off on the far sideline along with Ronnie Harris. And so now Pat Washington is going to check into the game apparently at a running back position. Let's check this out. Randy Campbell over talking with the coaches on the sideline, and Pat Washington has checked into the backfield of Auburn. So let's see what Auburn does here. 17 seconds remaining. The Tigers, if they move the ball downfield, say inside the 25, they'll have to get out of bounds to stop the clock. 
The clock will stop, of course, on a first down, but it'll be immediately reset. So let's see what the Tigers can do here. There you see Coach Fab Guy's record after a five and six mark last year. A big turnaround this season. And Tigers uh, expecting to go bowling and expecting to know something about six o'clock next Saturday. Randy Campbell back from his conference of the sideline with Tiger head coach Pat Dye. 17 seconds to go in the first half. Auburn is trailing the Georgia Bulldogs 13 to 7 on the strength of a 47-yard touchdown run by Herschel Walker, a 50-yard field goal by Kevin Butler, and a 20-yarder by Butler. Auburn's touchdown came on a three-yard run by Campbell. Second down and seven. Got a big bend formation on the left side. Three wide outs. Pat Washington said very deep in the backfield. The pass is complete to Washington. Washington will throw it high and long, and who's going to get it? Toss it up. It's a jump ball. Oh! It was the Big Ben play or a variation on the Big Ben play. The ball batted by Mike Edwards. He tried to tip it high enough in the air for one of the running backs to run under the football. Great, great uh, play. A great trick play. I don't if you know if it's diagrammed that. that way, Paul, but oh, that's, that's the way exactly it turned the way out. it's diagrammed. He's supposed to tip the ball in the air behind him and let the running backs run under it. Pat Washington threw it exactly as he's supposed to. It's supposed to look short. Everyone gather under it. You make your tallest man jump and try to tip it over your head. There's Lionel James and Bo Jackson. He tipped it. And he tipped it perfectly. Jackson unable to, to just get a step and run it into the end zone. A great, great idea. Well, take a look at it from this angle. The pass is behind the line of scrimmage. That's a lateral. Pat Washington, the freshman from Mobile, does exactly as he's told. The tip by Edwards and Bo just gets a fingertip on it. Same formation. Here we go again. Let's see what happens this time. Six seconds to go in the half. There's the pass to Washington. Washington instead will run. <laughs> Almost tried to flea flicker it over to Bo. That was a forward lateral, it appeared, as time ran out. I'm not sure if they threw a flag on it or not. He was still behind the line of scrimmage, so it was a forward pass. So that is the end of the first half of play. The Georgia Bulldogs, the number one team in the nation, leading the Auburn Tigers 13 to 7. We'll be back with halftime comments right after this. We're underway here in the third quarter at Jordan Hare Stadium, where Auburn is trailing the Georgia Bulldogs 13 to 7. The opening kickoff to Willie Howell at his 10 takes it to the 20 yard line, and that's where the Dogs, or rather the Tigers, will have it first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Auburn trailing Georgia 13 to 7. The second half just underway. Campbell at quarterback. Randy's gone all the way. Fake to O'Neill. Quibbs forward for maybe three yard lines. Three yards. He's up to the 23 yard line. Randy is out uh, three yards on the carry. For the day, Randy has 36 yards rushing. He is the leading carrier in the game for Auburn. He has 13 carries for 36 yards. And Paul. That's a very important feature in this game so far. Well, again, Georgia was able to force Randy to keep the ball. They took the pitch away after he uh, elected to run with the football. He turned it inside. Will Forks with great pursuit, although Campbell did eventually wind up falling forward for four yards. Second down, six for the Tigers. Randy rolls to his left and wants to throw. Instead, tucks it down. He's near a first down and will have it. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. First down, Randy Campbell of Hartsville, Alabama. Very alert move by Randy Campbell. He rolled looking for Chris Wood. Tony Flack stepped into the throwing lane. He could not find Wood as Flack stepped right up into the throwing lane. And uh, Campbell just tucked it in and ran six or seven yards officially for the first down. Seven-yard run by Randy Campbell. There you see the first half statistics. Offensive plays, the big factor. Georgia with seven more offensive plays. They don't have the edge they would like to have unless they've had many times this year. 13 minutes, 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. Auburn trailing 13 to 7. First down. Campbell looks for Bo. Instead, keeps it himself. Takes a good hit at the 33 yard line, and that's where they'll mark his forward progress. Tim Crow, Jeff Sanchez, over to make the stop for Georgia. Difficult to turn the ball up that time. Georgia was able to get penetration, force the option deeper than Auburn would like to see it go. As a result, the play took a long time to develop. Campbell, though, again, able to go for about three yards, turning the ball upfield. Randy Campbell taking a physical beating now, though. He's carried the ball 15 times for 47 yards, and Georgia, again, persisting and taking the pitch away, especially the pitch to Bo Jackson. They've been successful so far. Ed West in a tight end for a second down seven play at the Auburn 33-yard line. Campbell looks, throws. Complete! Great catch! Great catch by Michael Edwards! 
Edwards at the 49-yard line, where Ronnie Harris is over to make the stop, but a great, great catch by Mike Edwards. The sideline's a little bit damp. It rained heavily here yesterday in advance of this cold front. Edwards lost his footing as he got to the sideline, but able to reach up, laying on the ground, and make the catch on the sideline for the first down. He slipped dove back and reached up from the sideline or from the ground and made the catch at the 49 yard line a fine play by mike edwards 6'4, 194 a senior from bradenton florida makes perhaps the finest catch of his career he has split just off the line or from the line first down for auburn campbell back to pass again wide open is chris woods overthrown at the 20 yard line chris woods had a step on tony flax the young freshman out of greensboro north carolina Campbell just couldn't quite get the ball to him. Jeff Sanchez tried to check Campbell as he moved him near the linebackers. Check the isolated replay as he runs by Sanchez. He was open over the middle when Sanchez missed him right in here, right there. As a result, he's wide open on the post pattern, but the ball just over his head. Good positioning by Flax, the freshman, coming up after uh, Sanchez fell down. That is Bill Lewis. He is the Georgia defensive coordinator, an All-American at East Stroudsburg State, Pennsylvania. Tommy Carroll into the Auburn lineup, split to this side. Campbell fakes, look, cuts it up instead. Maybe had a pitch there, a bow, but at the 48-yard line, Randy did the wise thing, held on to it, got the yardage he had, and kept the four-yard gain instead of risking a possible fumble. On occasion this year, we've seen Randy run the ball four or five yards upfield, then make the pitch, but that, as you said, would have been a very, very risky uh, play to make. Randy, it's only five out of seven passing at this point in the game for about uh, 89 yards. It'll be a third down and six yards to go for the Tigers. The ball is the Georgia 47-yard line. 11.53 to go in the third quarter. Randy drops back. He's under pressure. He will throw. Complete to Chris Woods at the Georgia 32-33 yard line. Chris Woods, the junior out of Birmingham Heights, Alabama. Jeff Sanchez and Ronnie Harris over to make the stop. Georgia blitzing every uh, blitzing two linebackers that time. Randy quickly getting the ball away, a 15-yard gain, six for eight passing now for Randy Campbell. As we check the replay, Georgia blitzing two linebackers. You see him under pressure, knows where Woods will be, and gets the ball to that place on the field. That's all he could do. He had no time to look for Chris Woods. He just had to throw to the, to the spot. An outstanding reception by the junior from Parker High School in Birmingham. First down, Auburn. The ball at the Georgia 33. The give is to Lionel. Little train James. He's to the 30. Maybe the 31. They'll give him a gain of two on the play. Jimmy Payne. He's a dandy. He's been injured. Has missed the last four games because of a knee injury. But he is now back. Jack Lindsay also in the game for Georgia. He is also in on that stop along with Nate Taylor. Payne's progress must have been phenomenal coming back after three and a half weeks from arthroscopic surgery of course georgia would have the next week off and so it's a little sort of surprising they're using him here unless they feel like they absolutely have to have him which obviously vince Dooley feels second down and eight for auburn jackson goes in motion to the far side campbell drops straight back has time and will throw intercepted that is jeff sanchez the pass intended for ed west Auburn will make the stop. Ed West in on the stop, along with David Jordan. So the Tigers' threat is thwarted by an interception by Jeff Sanchez on the tip pass. Second turnover of the game against Auburn. So the Georgia defense continuing their series of takeaways. That's 40 for the year. The ball uh, by Randy appeared to be pretty well thrown. You'll see the ball coming almost directly at you, right over the middle. Both hands on the ball, Ed West, and he is immediately hit before he can pull it in. Sanchez able to gather in the tip. But a pretty well-thrown ball by Campbell. Just good pass defense, good coverage by Georgia. The threat is stopped at the Georgia 17. The dogs take over there. Herschel Walker from the 17 to the 24. It is a gain of seven. It looked like maybe he wouldn't get much out of it at all, but suddenly he has seven yards on that carry. His 18th carry of the day, 112 yards rushing for Herschel Walker. Really no hole on the right side, but the line surge was about two or three yards, and Herschel added two or three to that. Second down and three for Georgia. They lead 13 to seven, 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Again, Walker. Walker may have had several more yards, but he was brought down at about the 30, 
three 32 yard line by Dennis Collier. Check the replay and you'll see what a fine open field tackle this was by Dennis Collier. Or this could have been really big yardage. Collier cuts him off and locks up on that right knee, otherwise, or on the left knee. Otherwise, Herschel Walker is a sprint down the right sideline. Dennis Collier, the senior from Sheffield High School in Sheffield, Alabama, makes this possibly touchdown saving tackle. 9.40 to play in the third quarter. They'll send McCarthy in motion. They'll pitch to Walker. Carr. Flag down. What will be the call, Paul? Let's check the call on this corner. McCarthy and Bob Harris were uh, involved in a little bit of an altercation or in a block, actually, out on the corner. And we'll see what the penalty is. It may be McCarthy was holding Bob Harris, or he might have hooked him as he tried to block him and hooked his leg with his arm. We'll see. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it on a replay or not. McCarthy, the fullback, came in motion. He, his job was to block on Auburn safety man Bob Harris, and he got the block, but it appeared that maybe he hooked him. We'll check it and see. Dennis Collier is motioning that the penalty will go against Georgia. Greg Carr and Quincy Williams made the tackle. It'll be blocking below the waist. So blocking below the waist, out away from the side of the, uh, the uh, away from the uh, line of scrimmage. Well, now let's check the replay there. You see the fullback going in motion. And we'll check and see if we can see the penalty here. It might be a crackback. If it is, that would be it near the center of the screen right there. Or the flag went down uh, to the left of the screen. We'll have to see uh, where the flag might have been there. There are a couple of places that uh, the penalty might have been called. They, may have, on the they may have called it on Mike Weaver. He is a sophomore guard out of Haines City, Florida. Perhaps they were outside that zone where you're allowed to make that block. And he cut down Chris Martin, and that may have been where the block came. It's a clip on Georgia, or a blocking below the waist. Call it whatever you like, folks. It's a penalty against the dogs. We won't try to straighten things out. It's 9.31 to play in the third quarter. Georgia will have the ball now first and 25. The ball resting at the Georgia 16-yard line. They lead it 13-7. John Alexander Lastinger. Valdosta, Georgia. Walker in motion. To give to McCarthy. Doug Smith over there dragging McCarthy him down along with Quincy Williams. Auburn really basically in a read defense. Doug Smith read the play, able to cut off the hole. 47 yards now and six carries for McCarthy. Of course, McCarthy had the big run very early in the game, the 21-yard run when he bounced outside. It'll be second down, 20 to go after the Georgia penalty. 8.47 to go in the third quarter. Georgia leading. Last finger to Walker. There's a hole. Quincy Williams misses. Several others miss. He is all the way out to the 33-yard line. It's a gain of 13 yards. James Brown, who is a junior offensive guard from Jeff Davis High School in Montgomery, made the block that sprung Herschel Walker. Unofficially 133 yards. You see the graphic 130 yards now for Herschel Walker. He is just an amazing, an amazing athlete. Running in heavy traffic all the way for the 13-yard game. Eight minutes, 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's a big third down and eight. Auburn showing blitz. Last finger to throw. No place to go, and John will not get the first down. A referee run out of bounds along with John Lastinger, perhaps maybe one of the chain people on the side. John Lastinger perhaps picks up a gain of, oh, maybe a yard, if that. And it will be fourth down, and the Tigers are held. Georgia will be punting into the teeth of the wind, and now the wind is starting to pick up. Lionel James is looking into a very bad sunfield, so I guess the factors may even out here. And now Auburn having some substitution problems. Broadway with three punts, averaging right at 36 yards. And Auburn has yet to return one of Broadway's punts today. Lionel James, the leading punt returner in the conference. Way, way high and long. James may get a return. Note, the last minute he signals for the fair catch. Georgia dodges him at the 18. And that's where the Tigers will take over. First down and 10. Best punt of the afternoon for Jim Broadway, a 48-yarder, almost one of his longest of the year. With timeout on the field, we'll be back with more right after this. Auburn, Georgia football, a replay. Seven minutes, 49 seconds to go in the third quarter. Auburn with a football trailing Georgia 13 to seven. They have it at their own 18 yard line. Go Bo. Go Bo, they say, and Bo goes to the 23, maybe the 24 yard line. Gain of five or six on that one. 
He hurdled the line of scrimmage, but Georgia really has been able to make it tough on Bo Jackson today for the simple reason that's been about the only way Auburn can get the ball to Bo is the handoff inside. They've taken the pitch away from Bo Jackson. He's now up around 26 yards on, what, nine carries for the day. There you see one of the training kits on the sideline. It'll get a lot of use today. These two are going at it pretty well. Second down, four. Pitch to James. James cuts it upfield. He's got some yardage. He's got a first down. He's up near the 30. It's a gain on the play of about six yards for the little train. And that gives Auburn another first down. Georgia showed blitz that time. Will Forks got up into the line of scrimmage. And we'll see if we can check on the replay. Both linebackers up near the line of scrimmage. As a result, once Auburn got outside, they were able to cut down the pursuit from the linebackers. Forks was cut down at the line of scrimmage. And Lionel was able to turn up on the corner because the linebackers' pursuit had been cut back. You saw a great block on that play by Pat Arrington on Jimmy Payne. A couple of potential All-Americans going at it on that one. 6.48 to go in the quarter. First down, Auburn. Campbell drops straight back. Flare pass to James. James at the 30. To the 35, maybe the 36, depending on where they mark him out. It'll be a gain of about five or six on the play. Final sort of ran out of room. He got all he could from the play after a gain of about five. Nice bit of restraint by Will Forts on the corner that time. It appeared he had a shot to really uh, give a shot to Lionel James on the corner. He restrained himself as James ran out of bounds on the far side. The Georgia defense leading the nation in takeaways this year. They have two turnovers from Auburn today. Stats on Randy Campbell, 8 for 12 on the afternoon for 74 yards passing. Second and five. Campbell keeps and is drugged down from behind by 71, Kevin Jackson. Or perhaps like Ron O'Neill got the ball. Yeah. Ron O'Neill got the ball. Everyone was taking in on the fake, including I was the taking Georgia in defense. Too. But O'Neill got the ball, and really uh, someone reached up off the ground to knock him down, or he might have had running room because the Georgia linebackers were reacting with Randy Campbell also. Yeah, but let's give Randy credit. Great fake on the play. <laughs> Campbell on the give inside of O'Neill. You saw Bill Lewis over there on the sideline calling the Georgia defensive signal. Third down and four for the Tigers. The ball at the 36. Randy under a lot of pressure. Georgia showed blitz. Kenneth Sims in there early along with Freddie Gilbert, Terry Hogue, and a host of white shirts and silver britches, and Auburn will kick it away. Terry Hogue might have taken the play away, though, blitzing from the left corner. And uh, he did not show it. He did not tip it off. Watch him from the left side of your screen. Auburn, uh, I think Randy wanted to throw it back that way. And they took it away from him very quickly. He tried to turn and find another receiver. No one available on the loss. Auburn faces a punting situation. Lewis Colbert in the game with five minutes, 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. Colbert gets it away. It is kicked away from Jimmy Harrell. He has it now. It is 36. Good defensive coverage there by the Auburn kick team. Tim Drinkard over to help make the stop. A 39-yard punt by Lewis Colbert and a three-yard return. A 36-yard net, not a bad situation. With timeout on the field, the score, Georgia 13, Auburn 7. We'll be back with more right after this. Georgia back in business now. The football at the 40-yard line. They lead 13-7 to with five minutes and 12 seconds to play in the third quarter. A flag on the play as Herschel Walker gets about five yards. We'll see what the call is. Paul, did you check it anywhere? The flag was thrown in the offensive blocking area. The Auburn uh, players, Greg Carr, signaling it. it may be going against Georgia. Normally, when the flag comes from that angle, it is something uh, akin to holding. The penalty may have been on Wayne Radloff. He is the Georgia offensive center, born in London, England, and speaks English very well, I might add. <laughs> Coach Vince Dooley, and he is obviously a little upset with that mental breakdown by the Georgia offensive unit. Yeah, I think Vince's facial expression says it all there. Fabulous career at the University of Georgia, going for his 150th career victory today. You know, we mentioned Coach Ralph Cook Jordan inducted into the National Football Hall of Fame here today. Coach Jordan, an assistant at Georgia before he came to Auburn as head coach. Vince Dooley played for and coached for as an assistant. Uh, coach Ralph Cook Jordan then went to Georgia from Auburn. Four minutes, 57 seconds after the step off against the Dogs, they face a first and 20, the ball at their own 31. It's absolutely amazing the way this kid runs the football. You can watch him all year long, and you still get amazed every time he touches it. Herschel Walker, about a nine-yard gain when perhaps 
any other back in the country would have gained maybe two or three. It doesn't take long to get the penalty yardage back when you can, uh, most, for most teams, that would have been a passing situation first and 20. That tells it all, doesn't it? It really does. 31 and two with this young man in the lineup. Second and 11. Last finger rolls to his left and will throw. He had Herman Archie on the sideline, maybe a step or so on Bob Harris, but the pass way, way overthrown. On the afternoon, two of seven passing is John Lastinger for only 22 yards. The Bulldogs last in this conference in passing the football. They have some super receivers, both Simmons and Archie with sprinter-type speed, along with Walker coming from the backfield. But I think that time Lastinger did the right thing. The coverage was too tight, and he just threw the ball away and decided, well, we'll try again on third and 11, come up with something else. It is a third down 11. Big play for the Georgia Bulldogs. The Auburn fans sense that, and they start whooping up a little bit. 4.13 to go in the quarter. Nowhere to go for Herschel Walker. That's because Big Ben was right there with him to stop him in the backfield. That is the key. As we mentioned earlier, you've got to get penetration, and that's really what Georgia stresses, not allowing penetration because of Herschel Walker. Gets two or three steps, it's almost impossible to keep him from gaining yardage. Ben Thomas, I think the man who got the penetration will check here. And there you see it. He hit him in the backfield. Ben Thomas, before he could straighten up Quincy Williams in to help finish him off. 3.41 to go in the third quarter, and Georgia will punt. Broadway back, gets it away. Low, line drive. James will watch it bounce. There will be no return on this one. Georgia will down the ball at about the 30, pardon me, the 27-yard line. It's a 35-yard kick. And no return on the play for Auburn. Knox Culpepper over to make the, the down the football at that point. With a timeout on the field, we'll be back with more. Georgia 13, Auburn 7. A new backfield for the Tigers. Pratt, Campbell, and Howell behind Randy Campbell. They give on the inside to Greg Pratt. Pratt maybe, oh, maybe two yards on the play. Tim Crow was the first man there to make the stop. Auburn's moved the ball well throughout the third quarter, but they have nothing to show for it on the scoreboard, and I think maybe Coach Pack Dye feels here, uh, as we near the end of the third quarter, he would like to get something from his second unit, but also he'd like to, he almost has to rest Lionel James, Ron O'Neill, and Bo Jackson at this point. A big, very physical Georgia defense, and they've been taking a beating, those Auburn backs have, and they'll get a breather on this particular series of downs. Less than three minutes to go in the third quarter, Auburn second down and eight. They'll send Collis Campbell, the freshman from Florence, in motion to the left side. The pass complete to Willie Howell. Howell will barely get back to the line of scrimmage before he is brought down there by several Bulldogs. Tony Flack, one of them. Looks like Stan Dooley also over there for the stop. Real pressure on Randy Campbell then. Dale Carver gave him a shot as he released the ball on the far side. Here is Randy dropping the throw, and you see the play on the interior line. David Jordan uh, holding his own on that pass play. Nate Taylor and Freddie Gilbert also over there defending for Georgia. Auburn starting backfield returns to the lineup. Pratt comes out. Ed West comes out. Edwards will come wide to the near side. Two minutes left in the third quarter. The Utah pass goes nowhere. The little pitch back pass from Randy Campbell to Lionel James. Absolutely no place to go. Kevin Jackson, 6'2", 245, a senior from Cartersville, Georgia. Smelled that one all the way. As odd as it may sound, not enough penetration by Georgia here. You'd like to let the penetration come by the receiver. And uh, actually, Lionel ran right into Kevin Jackson. He had not come by. As a result, there was no place for Lionel James to go on a little whoopee pass or uh, whatever you prefer to call it. The punt by Lewis Talbert is away. It is not very deep. Jimmy Harrell has it and may have a decent return out of it. In fact, does. He gets it inside the 50 into Auburn territory down to the 47-yard line. So Georgia with their best field position of the afternoon, a 34-yard punt by Lewis Talbert and a 9-yard return by Jimmy Harrell. That's almost his average. So with a minute 22 to go here in the third quarter, Paul, they're in business. And that's a big swing in field position. Auburn with the wind at their back would like to have... Uh, getting a little more advantage on that series and particularly on that punt. Georgia starting in Auburn territory. Starting backfield for Georgia. In motion to the near side. That's Kevin Harris. Looks like either a fumble or a slip in the backfield. Last finger, perhaps not a good exchange on that play. It's a loss back to midfield. Loss of three. Second down and 13 for Georgia. 
And we'll it appeared again. that Auburn did not have the penetration that time. Last thing, it just had trouble coming out with the football. And I'm not sure from this angle or the angle we viewed it from, if he bobbled the ball or just slipped down. Second and 13 at midfield. The pitch to Walker. Walker has three, maybe four yards. And that's all before pretty much half the Auburn defensive unit is there to bring him down. Jeff Jackson, Tim Drinkard, Ben Williams, and several other Tigers there to make the stop. To this point, with 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter, Auburn has held Georgia to just one first down in the second half. Auburn has uh, really had some advantages with regard to field position moving the ball up until this last uh, uh, change of possession when Georgia started at the Auburn 47, and now they face third down 10. Wisham and Harris are the wideouts for Georgia. That's last thing, a pressure from Quincy Williams. He dumped it over the middle to Walker. Walker will not have the first down. He will be far short of it. It'll be down to about the Auburn 43-yard line. They needed to get to the 37, so the dogs will have to kick it away. What pressure that puts on a linebacker. Ronnie Ballou covering Hershel Walker out of the backfield, and a great job he did there. That's the end of the third quarter of play at a very noisy Jordan-Hare Stadium with the score, Georgia 13, Auburn 7. We'll be back with more right after this. We'll be underway here in the fourth quarter. Georgia leading Auburn 13 to 7. Georgia will kick from the Auburn 43-yard line. Broadway in to do the punting. And they'd sure like to down this one deep in Auburn territory. Lionel James will call for the fair catch. And it will bounce and will be down. Should be back up field some, not inside the five. Yeah, right near the 10-yard line is where the ball hit the man. We'll see where they down it. And I think it will be, well, at least across the five and about the seven where well, it's going to be marked down. And the Auburn field section is not going to like that at all. They, they just missed the, the spot. They did miss the spot on that one. It should, as Paul said, it should be back around over the nine or 10-yard line. Instead, Auburn will have it at about the six-yard line, in the they'll take over. In the third quarter, Auburn with four first downs to only one for Georgia, but Auburn now starting the fourth period at a severe disadvantage, moving against the wind and starting inside the 10-yard line. A very, very key series of downs for the Auburn Tigers. Campbell brings them out of the huddle to the line. They give us to Bo Jackson. Jackson to the 10, nearly to the 15. Great run by Bo Jackson, hit back near the line of scrimmage by Kevin Jackson, but Tommy Thurston is there finally to bring him down along with Jeff Sanchez. Kevin Jackson and Stan Dooley just couldn't hold on. Bo Jackson with some uh, very, very uh, aggressive power running to power them all out across the 10-yard line. A nice first down play, a very good first down play for Auburn as Coach Pack Dye watches from the sideline. The graphic you saw a moment ago, Auburn with two turnovers, Georgia with none. Both turnovers have figured in Georgia scoring. 14-15 to play in the football game. Second down and three. WSFA Television, Montgomery. The little train is underway. The little train may go all the way. Lionel James to the 40. Lionel James to the 20. Lionel James will score. Touchdown, Auburn! What a magnificent run. Only the sixth time Auburn's been able to get the ball to Lionel James, but they got the option on the corner. Great play by Randy Campbell. Got it on the corner. No flags on the field. 87 yards for Lionel James. He cut back, set his block at the perfect time. Lionel James, one of the many Georgians on this Auburn football team. And that gives Auburn a tie. Auburn going for the lead now. Check it. Campbell with a perfect pitch. Deliver the ball in good shape. Break the tackle. He sets the block on the corner. Outruns Gilbert. Cuts it back at just a moment away from Sanchez. And Lionel James takes it the distance. 87 yards. And what was it they said about the young man that he maybe couldn't play in the Southeastern Conference? Georgia recruited him as a point guard in basketball. The Georgia Bulldogs told Lionel James he was maybe a little too small to play in the Southeastern Conference. It is now Auburn 14, Georgia 13. We'll be back in just a moment. One more look at it. Great fake to the inside. Randy, just as he's hit, makes the pitch. Great fake on Ronnie Harris. And once he gets this far, it is all over. It's a foot race, and not anybody is going to catch this young man. 5'7", 170 pounds from Albany, Georgia. Touchdown, Tigers. Lionel told us Tuesday at the press conference 
Georgia did not recruit him as a football player. They recruited him as a point guard in basketball. They felt he was not big enough to play in the SEC. The Auburn scoring drive, 94 yards on two plays, an 87-yard run by Lionel James for the touchdown. Al Del Greco will get the kick away. It is wide. It is out of the end zone. A great kick by Al Del Greco. Georgia will start at their own 20-yard line. Al Del Greco with his fist in the air as he came off the field against the win, kicking it for the touchback. Georgia with the win in the fourth quarter. They'll start at their 20-yard line. You're looking at the young man who has just erupted this Auburn crowd here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. They are going berserk, all 75,000 of them. Well, maybe I should correct that. There's some 10 or 12,000 Georgia fans, and they're not making a lot of noise. But there is a lot of football left to play. 13.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Auburn leading 14 to 13. Herman Archie in motion to the far side of the field. They give this to Herschel Walker. Walker to the 20, to the 30. Run out of bounds at the 31. There will be a face mask penalty on. It's going to be a late hit. He was way out of bounds. And that's an unfortunate loss of composure really on the Auburn sideline as uh, Herschel went out of bounds and took the shot on the on the side side and so Silver really a 26 yard run after they marked Herschel's progress in the fourth quarter this year before today Georgia had scored 97 points and given up only 12. Here's the replay and watch Herschel Walker as uh, they move it it really started out as a play up the middle Herschel cut it back against the grain he's had a lot of success doing that today was hit and then hit way, way out of bounds. A very, very uh, unfortunate loss of composure on the Auburn sideline there or by the Auburn player on the sideline. And that gives Georgia an extra 15 yards, the equivalent of a 26-yard gain. The run by Walker good for 11 yards on the afternoon, 150. We show him with 154. But at any rate, he is near his average on 24 carries and, of course, the 47-yard touchdown run. First and 10, Georgia, the ball at their own 46-yard line. That's Archie in motion. The give is the first man through. Chris McCarthy hit hard at the line of scrimmage by it looked like Ben Thomas. Then several other Tigers helped mop up on that particular play. It's a gain, oh, of maybe two to three yards, or they'll have it second down, seven or eight at the 48, 49 yard line. Auburn's had some luck closing down the middle today, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, Herschel and the Georgia offense, McCarthy also have had better luck. Uh, going toward the middle and cutting back against the grain. Auburn over pursuing a little bit of time. Good afternoon for Chris McCarthy. 52 yards rushing. They give to Walker. Walker stutter step. Hit at the line. Maybe a yard, maybe two. And that's all. No place to go, but Herschel still got a yard or two out of it. And that's uh, another indication of the greatness of this young man. Big, big play now for the Georgia Bulldogs. We still have a lot of time remaining, almost 13 minutes. But it's a possession situation for Georgia. On third down and five, the ball just across the 50-yard line in Auburn territory. Georgia today only three of 11 on possession down uh, conversion. The crowd is up. They're making a lot of noise as Georgia sends Herman Archie in motion to the near side. They give us to Walker. Walker has the first down. He is really an amazing athlete. Auburn had the play shut down. And we'll check the replay. Herschel Walker really hit three or four yards short of first down yardage, but able to come across. There he was hit at about the 47-yard line, got it all the way down to the 43-yard line. An amazing, really amazing athlete. The ball rests at the Auburn 43. They lead 14 to 13, but they are nearing Kevin Butler's field goal range. The clock shows 12 minutes to play in the game. First man through is McCarthy. He has hit hard by Greg Carr and several other Tigers and stacked up at the 42-yard line, a gain of only a yard on the play. Good hard hitting in there by Greg Carr, the sophomore from Woodlawn High in Birmingham. Again, as we said, Auburn tough inside. Georgia's had more success with the counter than going back against the grain. Second down, eight. 11.45 to play. The clock is moving. Georgia trails the Auburn Tigers 14 to 13. They give us a Herschel to the 40, to the 39, and that's about all. Nice pursuit by the Auburn team that time. They mark him out just across the 40-yard line as Walker uh, tried to turn it upfield. Really never got the corner with his superior speed. He was able to make about three yards, two or three yards, but that was all. And again, a big third down situation. This looked like he was out for a little Sunday afternoon jaunt. Still picks up three yards. 
Stops the clock with 11.35 remaining in the football game. Auburn leading the number one ranked team in the nation, the Georgia Bulldogs, 14 to 13. Last singer fakes to Walker. Now wants to throw. Complete, wide open down at the 23-yard line was Herman Archie, a freshman from Columbus, Georgia, makes the reception and gives the Bulldogs a first down deep in Auburn territory. Archie found a way open in the seam of the Auburn zone, and last singer really delivered the ball in good shape. He's the 10th-ranked passer in the SEC, but that time rolling to his left, he squared the shoulders downfield and delivered a bullet to Herman Archie. Just a reminder for the Auburn secondary, and I guess Georgia felt they had to do it that time, throwing, but that is, uh, serves as a big reminder for the Auburn secondary. First and 10, Georgia at the Auburn 22-yard line. Kevin Harris comes in motion this side. Herschel Walker. He is down to the 16-yard line. Again, nowhere to go. Again, six-yard gain. It is unbelievable a man that big can change directions and cut change direction to move with such speed. Norman Van Brocklin, a former scout for the Atlanta Falcons, once took a look at Herschel in high school, said he doesn't elude people, tries to run over them instead, didn't think much of him except to say he's the biggest, fastest kid I've ever seen and belongs in the NFL right now. He'll be there maybe in a couple of years. This time, though, it's Chris McCarthy. He's down inside the 15-yard line, down to the 13-yard line. It's a gain of three. Is it a first down? They'll have to measure, I believe, as they bring the chains in. Georgia with now 10 snaps in this drive. After the Auburn touchdown, they were really helped on the first play on the 15-yard penalty against Auburn that moved it out quickly to midfield. But Georgia really doing what they do best, and that's just running the football uh, power running. It will be short. It'll be about a foot to 18 inches short of the first down. So Georgia will have it on a key third down at the Auburn 13-yard line. Auburn sends in big James Wallace, Dow Ottman also in there, along with Doug Smith, Quincy Williams across the front, and Ben Thomas. Third and short. They give to Walker. He has the first down down to the 11. Maybe they'll spot it at the 12-yard line. Not much doubt about what was coming there. You'll see it Check again. the replay and look at the man's extension. Auburn got penetration, almost got Herschel before he could jump. But once he got in the air, he had the first down. It's a first down just outside the 10-yard line at the 11. So Georgia now first down outside the Auburn 11. The Bulldogs have played Turner over free football to this point, And that's been a big factor in the football game. Auburn Ten. leading, though, 14-13. Ten minutes remaining in the game. Georgia threatening. McCarthy. Inside the 10, down to the 6-yard line, maybe the 7-yard line. It'll be a 4-yard gain, maybe a 5-yard gain for Chris McCarthy. McCarthy's running today a great compliment to that of Herschel Walker. Greg Carr and Dennis Collier up to make the hit. But it'll be a 2nd down and 6 for Georgia. The ball is the Auburn 7-yard line. They can get a 1st down without scoring. Herschel. Herschel to the four, maybe to the three. He is sacked up there at that point by Bob Harris and a host of other Tigers. Greg Carr also in on the stop. It is really amazing. Every play, Herschel Walker is keyed on by the opposition defense, rarely fumbles, always moves the ball forward. This is a very, very big play now for the Auburn defense on third down. Third and two. Touchdown, Herschel Walker. Appeared to be stopped at the line of scrimmage, shuffled his feet, slid his body over, and sticked it in the end zone for the Georgia Bulldogs. And they now lead Auburn by a score of 19 to 14. Be interesting to see if Georgia will elect to go for two. There's the replay. Herschel thought about diving for first down yardage, just saw a crease and was able to slide into the end zone off right tackle. You may get a better look at, the, at what he saw this time. Chris Martin took away the dive, but Herschel able to keep from diving and really just slide off right tackle into the end zone. An 80-yard, 14-play drive, and now Georgia is going to use a timeout as they get set 
for the uh, attempt at the conversion. It appears they will be going for two. Big Warren Gray, number 68, you saw in the replay a moment ago, helped open that hole for the Herschel Walker touchdown. His second touchdown of the day, that will set a new touchdown responsibility record at Georgia, breaking the record that Herschel tied earlier in this game. The record, of course, was held by another former Heisman Trophy winner, Frankie Secret, back in the early 40s. 8.42 to play. Georgia perhaps going for two. We'll know in a moment. But they now lead the Auburn Tigers by a score of 19 to 14. The drive of 80 yards and 14 plays for the Georgia Bulldogs. It was really a work of art. Well, it really was. The penalty has been set on Auburn on the first play of the series really helped Georgia moving them out from the 20-yard line all, all the way to the 46-yard line after the 10-yard uh, run by Walker. But then Georgia just with power offense moving the ball down the field, only one pass in the drive. An important pass, of course, it was, that first down toss from John Lastinger to Herman Archie. Georgia will go for two. Georgia will try to take a seven-point lead. They send McCarthy in motion. Lastinger wants to throw it. Throws into the corner of the end zone. Overthrown! It is overthrown! Georgia leads Auburn 19 to 14. A lot of time remaining, 8.42. Six points, two field goals or a touchdown put Auburn back in the lead here. Eight minutes, 42 seconds to go, and of course the Tigers with a touchdown will take the lead. We'll be back with more. Georgia 19, Auburn 14. We'll take a look at that last touchdown run by Herschel Walker. Paul, good blocking on that side. As you said, Chris Martin dove in there to take away his dive but the great body control, and he scores. Well, that's true, and Herschel likes to dive. Auburn knew that. Chris wanted to take away the dive for first down. Herschel good enough to make it turn into a touchdown by sliding off to the right. Kevin Butler's kickoff will go to Lionel James about four to five yards deep, and Lionel will down it there. Auburn will take over at their own 20-yard line. The Tigers trailing Georgia 19 to 14 with eight minutes, 42 seconds to go in the football game. The Auburn offense has been very effective, though, in the second half. Tigers have moved for five second-half first downs. And, of course, uh, the big one being an 87-yard first down and touchdown run by Lionel James on Auburn's last possession. So Auburn now trying to answer the Georgia touchdown drive with a scoring drive of their own. It could possibly be one of the more important possessions of the afternoon for the Auburn Tigers. First and 10 at the 20. The pitch to James. James is out across the 20, up to the 24. The fake inside seemed to draw or freeze the Georgia linebackers, and Lionel was able to make a little yardage out of it. Auburn now finding a way to get the ball to the corner on the option. Georgia changed a little bit. They're trying to make Randy pitch a little earlier now. Last time he turned it inside, broke a tackle, and got a touchdown. This time Dale Carver able to hang on and get help as Lionel turned it upfield for four yards. Both coaching staff doing some excellent work in adjusting to the problems presented by each other. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson hurdles across the 25 out to the 29-yard line. It will set up a third and very short situation for the Tigers. Really third inches as they mark it just barely short of the 30-yard line. So a key possession play for Auburn as they try to convert third and really much less than a yard, only inches. Tommy Thurston and Tony Flack up to make the stop for Georgia. Ed West and Jeff Park, both tight ends, enter the Auburn lineup. Auburn 6 for 13 on third down conversion, or third and fourth down conversions this afternoon. 7.34 and counting to play in the football game. Auburn trailing 19 to 14. Campbell sneaks it across the 30, and Randy will have the first down. Maybe after the 31, he is to the 31. Gain of a little over a yard, and Auburn has a first down. It'll go in the books as a two-yard run. Twice Auburn has been able in key situations to run right behind the center. Bishop Reeves, of course, and uh, Jerry Randall able to fourth yardage forward when Auburn has needed just a very short yardage on conversion situations. For the day, Randy with 18 carries, 44 yards. Unofficially, we have him for 42. Campbell fakes to the inside, cuts it upfield to the 35. Good run by Randy Campbell. Another about an eight, nine, maybe ten yard gain on the play. And that'll bring up a second down in short situation. 
Randy taking a lot of punishment, but they gave him the running lane that time, and he was able to turn it up inside for nine yards. Again, Auburn will face a situation with less than a yard to go, and now they're going to bring the chains across for a measurement. Randy Campbell from North Alabama, junior from Hartsville, a fourth-year junior. He had a redshirt year in there also, and he is a solid fundamental quarterback. Coming into his own late this season as a passer also. Kevin Jackson, Stan Dooley, and Tony Flack are credited with the tackle on that particular play for Georgia. This may be one of the longest appearances we've seen for the Georgia defense this year. The Auburn offense has done a good job of keeping them on the field since the first quarter. Since the first quarter, Auburn has done a very good job of being able to keep the ball for a period of time each time they've got the ball, particularly here in the second half. Just short. Just short of first down yardage as Campbell turned it up inside. Second down and just inches. You can do a lot in this situation, feeling that you can come back and make it on third and short uh, if you like to throw long or uh, maybe run a little gimmick play. We'll see what the Auburn Brain Trust decides to do with seven minutes to go in the football game. Georgia leading Auburn by five points, 19 to 14. Seven minutes to play. Auburn trailing Georgia, 19 to 14. The Tigers look on as it's a second down and perhaps four or five inches for an Auburn first down. The ball at the Auburn 40-yard line. Campbell with a count. Sneaks it straight ahead himself. Auburn apparently electing to play it a little safe on this drive. Randy dives forward behind his center once again for the first down. With Auburn needing to get into the end zone, trailing by five. Now under seven minutes to play and the clock running as they place it down first down at the 42-yard line. And that for the third time today on a possession situation, Auburn has gone behind the center and made the first down with ease. Sims and Bobo into the Georgia lineup on defense. The give is to Bo. Bo has a hole. Bo is across the 50, across the 45. We've got a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is. It may have been a face mask on Georgia. Let's check the penalty. Someone just able to trip Bo Jackson up at the line of scrimmage. Kept him from being able to make a move or a cut in the secondary. And let's check the penalty as Georgia uh, starting to retreat. And we have no signal. It is a face it mask. Is. It may be an inadvertent face mask, which would tack on about five yards. We'll have to wait and check the call. We'll see if we get a replay as Jackson got on the corner and in the second half. I'm not sure what the Auburn coaches did at halftime. They've made some adjustments to get the ball in the corner to Bo Jackson and Lionel James, and that's made a world of difference. Just an arm off the ground. A man who has been blocked down, got an arm out, and was able to trip Bo Jackson up. And there you see the face mask, an inadvertent five-yard face mask penalty. So Bo Jackson moves the ball down inside the Georgia 36-yard line. Jeff Sanchez, the free safety for the Dogs. He's a six-foot, 180-pound junior. He is out of Yorba Linda, California, a native of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Moved to California as a young man, played his high school football there. But Auburn has a first down and 10 at the Georgia 36. Campbell keeps it. They had the fake to O'Neal. Randy pulled it out, maybe looking for Lionel James, but Stan Dooley would have none of it. And the big junior from Tacoa, Georgia, makes the stop on Randy. It's a loss of about two yards on the play. But a loss of closer to four. Yeah. They mark it down. Uh, Auburn went with a power set that time, two tight ends, instead of spreading the uh, the offense across the field. After Randy pulled the ball back, he tried to get outside Dooley with a backside pursuit, able to knock him down. A fine play by Stan Dooley coming from the backside. Second time he's done that this afternoon and disrupted the Auburn option. Again, Great. a power set for Auburn. Great play, too, by Freddie Gilbert. He shook off two blocks to help out on that play. This time the give goes to O'Neill on the inside. O'Neill maybe gets the yards lost back on that play. It'll be close, but it's going to bring up a third down and look like maybe 10 or 11 for the Tigers. Auburn, as we said, using a little bit different alignment than they've used uh, very much in this game, going with a two tight end. Five minutes, 20 seconds. You see the situation. Auburn trailing Georgia by five points. This is perhaps the biggest play of the football game for the Auburn Tigers. The clock is on the side of the nation's number one team, Georgia. Five minutes, six seconds to play in the game. Third down, 11 for Auburn. Campbell drops back under pressure. Throws. Complete! First down, Auburn! The Tigers will have it at the Georgia 25-yard line. First down. Well-run pattern. Mike Edwards, the experienced receiver, 
knew where he had to get to find first down yardage. He went down, curled into the seam of the zone at the 20-yard line, came back to receive the ball at the 24-yard line for a very, very big Auburn first down. Campbell, who, as we said, has come into his own as a passer uh, since a slow start early, stood in the pocket well, under pressure, and zipped the ball against the wind to Mike Edwards. Was that Landy, a 10 for 13 this afternoon, 80 yards passing. What a crucial pass by the youngster from Hartsville, Alabama. Randy himself fakes to O'Neill and then pretty much had no place to go because Stan Dooley was there again along with Kevin Jackson. Randy just fell forward. Maybe they'll get a half yard or a yard out of it, Paul, but that's about it. The clock continues to move with four minutes, 17 to play. Again, we hear the name Stan Dooley. He's really been a fourth in the second half, particularly in this football game. Uh, Dooley is handling the right defensive side of the line for Georgia, and he has had penetration really throughout the fourth quarter. The four minutes now to go. Pat Dye anxiously looking on from his sideline. Vince Dooley from his as well. Second and nine. To Bo. Bo runs over somebody. Who's the number? 47. Nate Taylor, possibly. Yeah, Nate Taylor. Ba Nate Taylor and Tony Flack. Bo just lowered his head and picked up an extra two to three yards on the play. He gets it down to the 19-yard line. On, on that play, it's a gain of five. And again, Auburn devising ways to get Bo Jackson on the corner. He now has 60 yards on 13 carries, getting the ball a lot more in the second half of play. Another crucial third down for the Tigers. Third and five, the ball at the 19. Campbell to James. James has room. James has the first down and maybe a little more. He's inside the 15, maybe down to the 14-yard line, almost slipped and fell back there. Had a chance to score, it appeared, as he tried to cut back. He had blockers, uh, hit a wet spot on the field, still able to dive forward for first down yardage, and Georgia with a man down, Jeff Sanchez. Campbell delivers a ball in great shape. He cuts by Sanchez there, Jeff gets first down yardage. He would like to have cut it back against the grain, and now let's see as they stretch the chain. And he first does have down. it. It appeared he had it easily. It is an Auburn first down at the Georgia 14-yard line. 3.07 to go. And now we're in a situation, Rick. Auburn has to play for the touchdown. There can be no thinking about a field goal here. There's too much has run off the clock, and it's all going to come down to this series, it appears. This is what they call the gut check. The Auburn offense against the Georgia defense. And it's a lot of younger players against a senior-dominated defense who's been there before in big games. 2.48 to play, first and 10 Auburn at the 14 of Georgia. The Tigers trail 19 to 14. Marker down on the play. The O'Neill run may be wiped off. We'll have to wait and see. It's the same situation that hurt Auburn last week. Apparently, Lionel James did not establish his motion before the snap of the ball. The flag went down in the backfield, and it appears to be illegal motion against the Auburn Tigers as they blew the play dead. Uh, Auburn had the same situation last week from Lionel coming from the slot position, going in motion on the option, coming around in the option from a single set backfield. And uh, that time again, the, the judgment of the official, Lionel was unable to establish his motion. You'll remember against Kentucky, Auburn, again, another team that plays the wide tackle six defense, Auburn had problems kicking the ball in the end zone in what we call four down territory. A, a penalty in this situation here could be very, very critical. The ball moves back now to the 19-yard line. A check the replay. Watch Lionel James on the left side of your screen. Starts to come in motion. There he comes. Did not establish his motion before the snap of the ball. He was in lateral motion, but not established. Bo Jackson had absolutely no place to go. The blocking simply broke down. Tony Flack over there. He was not the first man to hit Bo. Looked like maybe um, number 95, Carlisle Hewitt, over there also to help out. It's a loss of two. And now, Paul, we're looking at a second down and 17. Auburn going against the wind, but with the penalty one, trying to find a silver lining, there is more room to run a pattern in the end zone now and spread the... So uh, Auburn does here for outside the 20 at the 21-yard line on second down. They have to get to the four for a first down. They have split Woods, Edwards, and James as the wideout. Big, big defensive play for the Georgia Bulldogs. They've sacked Randy Campbell back at the 31-yard line. It looked like Ronnie Harris was in there along with Dale Carver. Georgia likes to stunt in situations like this, and they got penetration very easily. The blitz coming from the right side defensively. 
and able to catch Randy Campbell from his blind side. He had no chance to react to the pressure from the back side. We're down to a minute 20 to go as Dale Carver came in from the right side defensively. Well, what you're looking at now, folks, this is the football game. Auburn trailing Georgia 19 to 14. They have the ball at the Georgia 30. They need to go to the five or the four for a first down, and Auburn will take a timeout to talk about this one. The they thinking th perhaps might be here to pick up 20 to 25 of it and then maybe go for the rest on the fourth down. Well, the Tigers want to get whatever they can here, but I, you're right. This is four-down situation by all means with 104 to go. Auburn, uh, the, the run is pretty much taken away dep depending on what they want to try to do here, but with the first down at the 14-yard line, Auburn can do pretty much what they wanted to. The situation is dramatically different now with third down. Back at the 30-yard line, they've got to move at 26 yards for a first down, and that senior-dominated Georgia defense came up, uh, really coming up with two big plays sandwiched around the five-yard penalty, and uh, that has Auburn in a bit of a hole right now. Two plays to move the ball inside the four-yard line. Again, though, the penalty, the illegal procedure penalty, was the killer in this particular set instance because it, instead of a first 14 a first and 10 of the 14 you had a first and 15 at the 19 and from there it got worse yeah and it may be a matter of experience as we said a young auburn team almost everyone coming back uh, to make a big play here would really be big for the auburn team down the road but especially right here randy campbell has finished his visit with his coach pat die and we'll see what auburn elects to do the ball in the center of the field third down 26 yards to go auburn with two downs to move the ball inside the four yard line a field goal does not help you because there's only a minute four to play. Georgia 19, Auburn 14, third and 26. Lionel James in motion. The blitz, Campbell throws. Complete to Ed West. He stumbles and falls at the 21-yard line. Ed West had running room but stumbled and fell. The pass came a little bit behind him. Ed West with a chance to move the ball down near the, at least the 10-yard line. A lot of running room. He was wide open. He caught the ball behind him. There you see, just a little unable to steady himself. And no one else in the picture. West with a chance to at least run it down uh, to the 10 or near the 10, perhaps inside the 10 with his power. But the pass just a little bit behind him, and it's really a game of inches. And now Auburn going to use a timeout, it appears, with 49 seconds remaining. Fourth down and about 17 yards to go from the 21-yard line. Seventy-four thousand or so in the stadium this afternoon. None have left as yet. Forty-nine seconds remaining. The number one team in the nation, the Georgia Bulldogs, against the Auburn Tigers. Auburn now down basically to one play at the Georgia 21-yard line. Randy Campbell visiting with Jack Crow and Coach Pat Dye. And there you see Bud Casey, the offensive backfield coach, also with instructions. And we'll see what Auburn elects to do here on fourth down and 17 Auburn yards to go at the Georgia 21-yard line. This is the football game. 49 seconds to play. Georgia 19, Auburn 14. Fourth down and 17 at the 21. The crowd will tell you what happened. It is incomplete. Georgia has held and will probably win the football game. Auburn now with one timeout showing on the scoreboard. 42 seconds remaining. Pass broken up in the end zone. Randy Campbell under a great deal of pressure. Had to throw to a spot. He threw to where he thought Mike Edwards would be. But Edwards drawing a lot of coverage over there. In the corner of the end zone. And uh, unable to catch, come down with the football in his possession. He got it on the ground. Auburn, of course, looking and hoping for some uh, some uh, contact and an interference call. There you Tommy see Campbell Thurston. under pressure. Gets the ball away deep into the corner of the end zone and overthrown Mike Campbell. The ball breaking up Sanchez, one of the men back there, along with Ronnie Harris. With timeout on the field, we'll be back with more right after this. Georgia will simply fall on the football. They had it at their 20-yard line. Auburn, with only one timeout, can stop the clock once, and that will be all. They elect to use that timeout now. So with 32 seconds remaining, Georgia simply has to fall on it two more times, and they will win the football game. Well, what a football game it has been, Rick. And I think everyone in this stadium knows the Auburn football program on solid footing. With recruiting season coming up, uh, Auburn going bowling this year, 
steady progress, really more than steady progress, progress being made at this point. Fantastic progress being made in the Auburn program this season. Georgia leading Auburn in 19-14. If they can run one more play, they can run the clock out. But what a football game we've seen. 86 times these two old rivals have butted heads. This will be Georgia's 41st victory in that historic rivalry. The Georgia Bulldogs are the 1982 Southeastern Conference champions. They will represent the league in the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day for the afternoon. A fabulous effort by Mr. Mr. Football, I guess, in this country, is certainly in the state of Georgia. Herschel Walker, 31 carries, 176 yards. We're showing him with 180, but according to these statistics, he'll have 176. We'll, of course, get the official statistics for you afterwards. Second down and 12 at the 18. Again, John Lastinger simply falls on the football. We may not get another playoff. We'll have to wait and see when the official spotted for play. No, it we won't will be not get another play. That will be the end of the football game. You're looking at the 1982 Southeastern Conference champion, the Georgia Bulldogs. They wave to their fans. They know they'll be in New Orleans on New Year's Day. The nation's number one ranked team has survived a scare from a valiant group of Auburn Tigers. Well, really more than a scare. A challenge has been thrown down there. The old Auburn grad, Vince Dooley, getting the traditional ride as Georgia has won this football game, 19 to 14. Uh, once again, what a football game it was as Coach Pat Dye trying to meet Coach Vince Dooley at midfield, and they tried to keep the fans, of course, off the field here as the celebration begins for the folks wearing the red and black. Georgia has defeated the Auburn Tigers, and you see what they're going to be thinking about come New Year's Day. They still have Georgia Tech, of course, but the Sugar Bowl will be their place on New Year's Day in New Orleans. The final is Georgia 19, Auburn 14, and Paul, your comments on the game. Well, both these teams going bowling. This football game, really back and forth. Early, it appeared as though Georgia was going to come in and blow Auburn out. They came in on their first possession, used up six minutes and 55 seconds, drove 77 yards in 17 plays. They suddenly got inside the 10. Auburn stiffened, forced them to take the field goal. They didn't want to do that. Auburn comes back late in the first quarter after uh, an ineffective first half of the first quarter, I guess you would say, driving 80 yards in 10 plays, an impressive drive. Randy Campbell on a naked reverse to score, and Auburn took a 7-3 lead. Georgia right back with Herschel Walker. They only took a minute to do it. 80 yards in four plays. Walker with a 47-yard run, breaking tackles for the touchdown. And then uh, driving late in the quarter, Butler with a 50-yard field goal with the wind at his back. And Georgia led 13-7 at halftime. Auburn, after a scoreless third period, an 87-yard run, an electrifying 94-yard drive in two plays for Auburn. Lionel James with the 87-yard run. Del Greco kicked, and Auburn led early in the fourth quarter, 14 to 13. Georgia answered with a Herschel Walker four-yard run, keying an 80-yard drive. And Georgia had to leave, but Auburn with one more chance. Eight minutes remaining. Auburn used up all eight minutes, driving finally to a first down at the Georgia 14 before seeing the rally fall short. A great football game, Rick. When it came down to it, Herschel Walker certainly a very, very important force for Georgia. 176 to 180 yards rushing in the football game, two touchdowns. But when the game ended, Herschel Walker was not on the field. It was the Georgia defense against the Auburn offense, uh, perhaps fitting in this great series that uh, Herschel's presence at the end was not a factor. Well, really, the Auburn offense did what Auburn did what they had to do to win the game. They rolled up 351 yards. Georgia with 292 yards. So Auburn with about a 60-yard advantage in total offense. The two Auburn turnovers, of course, critical as Georgia made them count four points. Uh, for six points. Lionel James, 112 yards rushing for Auburn, most of it on the 87-yard run. But really, the Auburn offense did what it had to do to win. Auburn with a great effort offensively and defensively this afternoon, and uh, they just fell short to the best football team in the country. The Georgia Bulldogs have defeated the Auburn Tigers 19-14. to We'll be back with a closing word right after this. For one ranking. Of course, the Bulldogs go now to 10-0 and on the year. Auburn falls to 7-3. and Georgia with Georgia Tech remaining. Auburn, of course, has the season ender, the nationally televised battle with Alabama at Legion Field on November the 27th. And what about the Auburn Tigers? We know Georgia's in the Sugar Bowl. What about the Tigers? I think the Auburn Tigers feel very secure that they will be going bowling during the month of December. A lot of bowl scouts here today, a number of bowl scouts from the Tangerine Bowl. I think I counted five. And that seems to be, as the rumor mill would have it, the place that uh, Auburn would be going. That's the final score from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Rick Davis for Paul Ellen saying so long till next time.